What is going on, everybody? I am Septilins here with Jag to bring you the first NECC Valorant game of the main season. Today we've got Tiffin University versus Becker College, and I mean, this is bound to be a great game. It is indeed. Like you said, it is the first game of the regular season. Season 0 here at the NECC. It's Challengers Division, so we're going to see teams around the mid-plat level, so we'll see how those competitors fend off today. And we already know what these preseason records are coming to this. Tiffin, they went 2-2. Two and two. Becker, they went one and three, so neither of them able to get a winning record, but still at least able to get one win. And interestingly enough, both of those victories came at the hands against Alabama Huntsville. Yeah, so Tiffin here, you know, they didn't exactly get that positive reinforcement, but they have that broke even. They're currently at that kind of zero ranking, and that's something to look out for because they can hold their own at least a little bit here, you know, having that not exactly even record, but, you know, maybe this game today will put them in that. Yeah, and one thing that's interesting about um, Becker, even though they weren't at even, they're at one and three, so a little bit negative there. They're all uh, interactive media students, so almost all of them are in the same major. So not only are they finding synergy in the classroom, they're also finding it here in game. So that should be something really fun to look at going forward. We're still waiting for the lobby to be set up, but we do know the map bans going into this already. It's going to be Haven, Bind, and Ascent as the tiebreaker as the three maps we have here in this best of three. Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, Haven, Bind, and Ascent in that order, if I'm not mistaken. So keep, definitely keep an eye out for those. We're definitely going to see Haven. We're definitely going to see Bind. And you know, if both these teams are able to take one map, we're going to be able to see Ascent as well. This is a best of three matchup. So one of these teams only has to win two games. And I say only lightly because we know how long a game of Valorant can really be. Yeah, I mean, especially when it gets to extra rounds, it can go, you know, it can go for so long. It can go indefinitely, basically, until a team is able to win two rounds in a row. So you can what team banned what so we had tiffin banning icebox we had becker banning split and then haven was actually selected by uh tiffin but i think this is really smart by becker they chose to be attackers instead of defenders it it's very unique to have a map like haven in a game like valorant because like csgo most of the maps here are only two points so there's only two sites right. to go to usually but on haven there's three so unlike most maps you actually have an attacker's advantage versus a defender's advantage yeah, and that's definitely something, like you said, kind of rare that you see here in Valorant. Adding that third kind of spices things up, forces some rotations and play styles to be shifted a little bit. And semi-related, huge shout out to whoever banned Icebox, because I hate that map. So I'm really glad to see we're not Me seeing too. that one here today quite yet. Definitely one of my least favorite maps in the game. But I'm really excited because, you know, Valorant, this is going to be, like you said, that mid-plat level, that mid-range level. And that might, ab that might actually give us opportunity to see things come from these players that aren't necessarily the meta. Yeah, and the meta, it's been shifted a lot since Valorant first came out. I mean, Sage, she used to be such a mainstay. Now she's out. Sky, who came out pretty recently, she hasn't really been in meta to pick, despite the fact that she has healing. So they've kind of gone away from heal competence. Some more triple duelists, sometimes double smokers. Uh, I mean, there were some changes recently to Brimstone and Omen. So Brimstone a bit stronger, Omen a bit weaker. But Omen, still pretty strong. I've seen a lot of players decide to stay, stay with them instead of switching back to the Brimstone. I, I think one of the most interesting things is where duelists lie right now jet yeah. she recently got nerfed her cloud smokes don't last nearly as long and then you got yoro coming out who does a lot of the same things he's a flanker he can get in positions you don't expect him to he can cause you know chaos with his footsteps and he's got that ultimate that makes him go invisible but yet still we're seeing jet staying strong and being probably the best choice besides phoenix as a duelist yeah, Jet is definitely kind of a mainstay, both in terms of popularity and effectiveness in-game. But I, like you said, Yoru is definitely an unusual character, one that I feel maybe hasn't had his full potential unlocked yet. One that we've seen just a little bit of, not necessarily in that competitive play, but a character that I personally think shows great value. Those footsteps, I think a lot of people aren't really understanding how effective a simple move like that can really be to throw off your, excuse me, throw off the enemy team and kind of really give your team a mild mental advantage, kind of a mental gameplay advantage. Yeah, his fake out is so strong. I mean, when I've been playing, I'm like, oh, like I hear an enemy. And then I'm like, oh, wait, no, I'm just dumb. There is no one there. And that's just how strong the ability is because it goes pretty far around the map. I mean, also, he's got a flash. 
his blind side is pretty great. He's got that kind of short distance teleport where he can get in and out of sticky situations, so he can either jump into a fight or jump out of fight. So Yoru, his abilities are still pretty good. We just haven't really seen them develop, and I'm wondering maybe there needs to be some changes there on Riot's end, or maybe there's just better duels out there already. I mean, Reyna has been the one that kind of rotates. You don't see her very often, but she's still yeah. pretty strong. She's kind of a feast or famine character, so she's usually the second one that comes in if there isn't a Phoenix on the field. So we'll see how those choices develop. Is there anyone else that you might want to see here today that might not be as much of a meta pick? Now, it's not necessarily somebody that I want to see, but somebody that I hope I don't. And we talked about Soma. this a little bit. Oh, no, it, I, no, no, it's actually it's not, not Sova. I was oh. going to say that it's Viper. The one that we talked about also mm. is Sova. Now, as much as I personally don't like Sova and I think he's annoying, I do think he can still be very effective. And we talked about that earlier before we were on stream. I think Sova has potential. Just it's more of a personal thing. I don't like the guy. But uh, with Viper, we kind of talked about she's not necessarily she doesn't really fit anywhere appropriately into meta and you'd really have to be able to utilize that specialized kit if you want to succeed i think viper isn't necessarily kind of a mainstay or a solid pick it's really going to be a high risk high reward because not only are you going to have to have great understanding of the player and their kit you're just going to have to play well normally kind of on your lonesome rather than a couple of other characters that may utilize some more team-based game player strategy and sorry to interrupt with that we'll continue this conversation for a little bit longer as we're still having some issues with the lobbies hopefully we'll get that settled very soon um but get an update all right so there are some issues right now with uh the computers on becker side unfortunately of some of the stuff going on in their land lab so hopefully they'll be able to get that figured out as soon as possible, we can get this game going on the road sooner than later. But I agree with you about Viper. Viper, she is just, I don't know, like, they haven't made any changes to her in a while, but Riot in one of their latest patch notes said, you know, we know she's still not in a great spot, so we'll continue to decide, like, how we're going to fix her. I think she's great on Icebox. She can be pretty good on Split, but those are both the maps that aren't going to be shown here today anyway. So I would really not like seeing her. And I, I just got to ask, I, I know you don't like Silva personally, but is there any reason gameplay wise i mean you said he's still pretty good i mean he's definitely pretty good it's just something about him being i don't know the whole recon ability that he has i mean he is an initiator and he's kind of is it is his objective to kind of find out where the enemy team is and try to find some eliminations off the back of it but overall i just there's something about his gameplay style and going up against him that just doesn't necessarily sit well with me i feel he's much different than a lot of other characters you see in the game and i feel like that kind of puts him aside both for me because when somebody plays him on my team, it's one thing, but when I have to go up against one, I just immediately am like, I don't want to be doing this. Yeah, I, I mean, like you said, Sova, he's similar to some of the other agents in Valorant. I think the biggest thing is he, he's based on like, getting in information, right? He's a reconnaissance kind of character. But you've got other characters like Cypher and Killjoy, they're defensive, but they also can get a lot of information based on their abilities. Sova doesn't have to be playing up close as either Killjoy or Cypher. I mean, the whole thing of Killjoy is now she has to be close enough to her abilities for them to actually be active. Cypher, if he uses an ability, you know, it's going to be gone. He can't pick it up and save it for next round. So there's a lot more risk there. Um, you get the Recon Bolt every round. It's one of those abilities that just has a cooldown. You're not going to buy it. And the Owl Drone is pretty cheap. 300 credits honestly isn't that bad. You can just throw it down, use it as a way to enter a point, or use it as a way to, you know, see if there's anyone when you're on defense holding a point. So there is a lot of utility there. And personally, he's one of my favorite agents in the game. Yeah, well, you know, I would say the same thing about Viper just to get under your skin, but no, I, I don't like her either, so I can't I can't be saying that today. That's and definitely, rare. something you mentioned already is that we aren't necessarily seeing a lot of difference in gameplay style of Jet. She's been around, she is around, and I really think she's going to be around for a while. She's definitely one of those characters to be watching out for. That almost main duelist, almost the face of Valorant, in my opinion, sure, to where she really is a mainstay in these team comps, no matter who else may be rotating around her. Yeah, I think you talk about like Mainstay is the face of the game. I think it's really a toss up between Jet and Phoenix. And Jet might be getting yeah. a little bit more playtime right now, but Phoenix still in a great spot, still one of the best duelists in the game. But one thing I've seen from some other teams in different leagues and competitions is that there's been a little bit of resurgence of Breach. Uh, he isn't being played all the time necessarily. And I think there's very specific map maps that he's better on than others, but I've seen a lot more than I was expecting. Uh, we might actually see him on binds. I would love to see that. I think Breach sure. can be very good as entering, you know, Hookah on bind or trying to get into um, U-Haul or some of the other spots on the map that are kind of more of a jiggle peek or just blind peek and probably die into kind <laughs> of a uh, attempt. So I would love to see a little bit more. I mean, he's got a concussion. He's got a flash. Yeah. He's got so much crowd control that he can be very valuable.
Yeah, absolutely. And blind peek and die is my favorite way to play this game. It's arguably my best ability here is blind peeking a corner and probably dying. But overall, I think, like you said, Breach isn't necessarily kind of a mainstay or a fascinating pick, but definitely has a great kit that can be utilized on maps like Bind. I think that was a great observation as well. Someone else to talk about kind of a dark horse in the race pun kind of semi-intended here is Omen, you know, the shadow creature himself. I think he really is an underrated pick. We see him relatively often, and I think he's got a great kit. He's got that paranoia to really kind of create that paranoia and help the enemy team bug out a little bit and he's got that teleport that can go um you know similar to what we see coming out of these newer characters with that invisibility but his teleport can cover the entirety of the map he's got some great abilities to really get behind enemy lines without being spotted and i think omen overall is just a solid pick yeah omen um uh, i mean i i think he's been around for a while now probably still undervalued as you said though because you know he isn't really the main character that most people consider to carry a lot of the time he's just creating better teamfight scenarios with his smokes or his paranoia as you said um but his teleport can get a lot of value it can be a great bait try to get an enemy defense away from a point just using it because you can hear the noise when it's cast off so you know that it's at least happening but it can just literally be them teleporting like two feet away but in the meantime as we continue to wait for this lobby to be ready this is a perfect time to talk about some of our sponsors here at necc and boy do we have some great ones first we're going to talk about meta pro gaming it's a full service esport management development and consulting company and you can visit them at metaprogramming.gg to learn more yeah, absolutely. And just to go right off the very back of that, we've also got Respawn and Respawn products. They're forged for that. Oh, they come for, for content creators, professionals, and casual players, of course. And they've got they've battle tested and they've got a whole bunch of stuff to check out. So we have to give them a huge thanks. And as well, if you guys are looking to upgrade your system, I mean, Respawn is the place to go. Their products are quite impressive. Yeah, I mean, while we're here and we're starting our ad reads, why not just go through all of them? We also got HyperX. HyperX, they make great gaming equipment. I got them for my keyboard i got them for my wrist rest but if you don't know them they make things for all types of gamers which includes hyperspeed memory solid state drives headsets mice charging accessories and the work so if you haven't seen them already be sure to check out hyperx.com and also look at all of their amazing celebrity ambassadors that they have yeah, absolutely. And just kind of to piggyback off that HyperX thing on um, the school, the, that my esports program here at my school, we use HyperX headsets and mouse pads, and they are just fantastic. So definitely, I've used those firsthand, and I think they really are great. So checking out HyperX would be a fantastic thing to do. We've also got, you know, Helix Esports. They offer world class gaming and virtual reality experiences, which I think is super cool. They just, and personally, I love VR gaming. I think it's really, really cool. Virtual reality is arguably the, one of the coolest innovations that we've seen in video games as a whole. But Helix Esports, they love to deliver that professional esports experience to people of all levels and capabilities. So whether you're actually a competitive player or not, I mean, check them out because what rather, you know, even if they, even if you aren't looking to play at that highest competitive level, they've got some really cool things to check out. Uh, you Absolutely. can actually, I should, yeah, you can follow them today at Helix Esports USA. Esports is spelled with a lowercase e capital S. And one thing about Helix, you know, you're talking about HyperX in your school, but actually I live very close to Helix's esports first land center that was put uh, together with the Boston Uprising and the Patriots organization in Foxborough. So not that far away from Becker College either. That's a school that's in Massachusetts as well as I am. But uh, moving on from there, unfortunately, I haven't been able to check it out because of the, you know, COVID pandemic. But we have one last sponsor that we want to shout out before we end this. ESTV, the first dedicated channel specifically for esports and gaming personnel. with 24 esports coverage that can be found on a lot of platforms, including the Roku channel, Amazon Fire TV, Samsung TV Plus, Sling TV, and Vizio Free Watch. They partner with some of the best gaming networks in the world, so be sure to check them out at some point as well. And it, it looks like uh, we're going to be taking a short break here as we continue to see if Becker get into this game. There might be a map one forfeit. But we're not sure on that just yet. So we're going to be taking a quick break. Or actually, we're going to hear from production. Okay, so we are going to take about a 10 to 15 minute break. Unfortunately, Becker, they are going to have to surrender map one because of how long this is taking. But we are at least promised one more map in the series. It's going to be Vine. So don't be going anywhere just yet because we'll be back with some Valorant action in a little bit. No way.
What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. I know you're probably thinking, wow, that was a really fast 15 minutes, because it was not 15 minutes at all. It was rather probably four or five minutes. These players got in a lot earlier than we thought, but unfortunately, the forfeit does still have to come through, so we're going to be moving right to our second map, which is Bind. Yeah, so Tiffany University Dragons, they're already going to be starting off with one map on the book, so no matter what, they're going to be watching. We have at least one map win today, no round differential, as there were no rounds to be played, but as you said, Bind going to be our second one of the series. This was Becker's choice, so there's definitely going to be a bit of an advantage here. They chose defense as well, which I think is always good. I Again, except for Haven, I think you almost always want to be on defense when you've got the opportunity to choose it. So we'll see how this goes down. And this is something I've seen actually pretty recently. I saw this yesterday as well for different league. Just all the Vipers being lined up immediately out of it. But you can't play five Vipers, unfortunately. Uh, there are agent limits for your team. So we'll see how these lineups look as they are locked in. And one thing to note that's very interesting on the side of Becker is they're going to be running a Brimstone instead of the Omen, which Mr. Reliable instead of Tiffin just locked in. Yeah, that is definitely something to look out for. And something else to get a quick peek at, the player named Raze is going to go ahead and play Killjoy. Oh, so that's, that's definitely not going to be good for us casting and for you watching at home. Definitely keep an eye out for that. But on the bright side, they don't have a Raze on their side. So Tiffin has Raze, but they are not playing Raze. And like you said, we're also seeing Omen come out. We're seeing Sova on both sides. We're going to see Cypher, and we're going to see a lot of differences here. Only one Phoenix, only one Brimstone. So there's really no meta being played here, so to speak. These characters are really kind of giving it their all blue light still waiting to lock in that final that final position they're going to swap onto that jet that face of valorant so to speak as i called her earlier yeah so you got the double duelist set up but the duelists are different you got i think the more traditional uh duelist comp right now the phoenix and the jet for the attackers for tiffin versus the rays and the reina on the side of becker and i really like the rays i think rays is really powerful again reina she's very feast or famine so if you don't get ahead early it can be very hard to catch up on her she's very reliant on her ability to be able to use her leers be able to get the soul orbs so we'll see how that works out for them in the long term right now I, again I, I think the biggest thing might be the fact that there is an omen versus a brimstone i think omen even by getting nerfed is still a bit better a bit stronger uh brimstone's orbital strike it can be a great ultimate if used correctly but a lot of time it just does not work out in your favor it just clears an area it gets no damage done yeah, absolutely. Like you said, I think Omen definitely comes out on top, nerf or not. The Omen definitely is the, in my opinion, at least the superior agent there to go toe to toe. Brimstone has that great ultimate, but Omen can actually be used to get out of Brimstones, ironically. They're kind of that teleport out of there. And it's definitely going to be that toe to toe matchup. Those are, you know, for the time being, those players to watch out for as we move forward here. Gate's going to open up, and I mean, it's going to be a blink and you miss it moment. These teams are all ready to draw that first blood. Yeah, and we're seeing Tiffin. They're going to try to go through Hookah, so they're going to try to sit up on B very early. You see the Paranoia go through. They're actually going to go long. So that's going to create a little bit of misdirection. The high hands going to be thrown in as well. So they know there's people in Hookah. Are they going to expect the people coming from B long? That's the first shots coming through. Yeah, first shots coming through. A little bit of damage able to be found off the back of it. Arrow on Phoenix now going to kind of tuck their tail and return back toward the defense spawn. Now we see Mr. Reliable trying to move forward. Everybody's playing with a severe level of patience. We're not really seeing anybody rushing in or anybody getting hyper aggressive, but instead we're seeing these players so that, that slow and steady game style. They want to try to find and collapse as many characters, as many opponents as they can. And we're going to wait. They know they're getting close to this first point. And here comes the first blood. It's going to be Epic Evan able to find Derek. Nope, able to take out Epic Evan off the back of it. It's going to be a one-to-one -one trade. There are no sages online. None of these players coming back, but Blue Light on a mild rampage here. Able to take out Firebird Jr. and Luca Light. Now we see Mr. Reliable looking to plant the spike already. This might be a much quicker round than we expected. Yeah, that was just a great play by Tiffin. They played patiently. They made a, not, a lot of noise on B, then took the teleporter all the way back to A. They were able to kill one as an entry frag. They did trade up, but the trade worked in their favor. A Now, it looks like actually a 4v2. I thought it was a 4v3, but it worked out greatly in their favor. Now, nope. One of the last understanding for Becker's going to have to try to do something. He's get one with the Frenzy. He gets two with the Frenzy. He has three on this round, and now suddenly it's winnable. Oh, uh, nope. I mean, all of a sudden. I mean, that's exactly what Nope just did. They looked, they looked this team in the face and said, nope, like, you're out of luck here today. The things are not working out in your favor. A phenomenal little rampage coming through. It's going to be that 1v1 Killjoy versus a very low health Sova. He's trying to find the defuse, but is he going to be able to do so? Going to go for the kill, but Raze able to find it. Killjoy able to take out that Sova in the final moment. The clutch able to come through. A phenomenal performance. I mean, just a great first round. I am stoked to see what these players are going to bring out next for us. Yeah, it was super close. Nope. On that Silva, it was almost able to bring it back from the brink for Becker, but they just took so much damage in that fight in U-Haul. They were so weak, as you said, only 22 health and a dream there, so they weren't able really to get it done. And now to the victors go the spoils, as you see Tiffin. They're going to go for a pretty nice buy off the back of that. SMGs all around, Spectres and Stingers for every team. And I've seen two different strategies as of late. Some teams 
after they lose the first round, they're still trying to force buy. Just trying to match it up instead of saving for that third round. But instead, Becker, they're going to go for the tried and true. They're just going to go with all classics. They're not going to buy it all here. And they're going to hope they can get a kill or two here. Maybe even get a thrifty round and tie things up. Yeah, a thrifty round to tie things up would be great for your, those of us watching at home. I mean, just, you know, you love to see nothing more than a thrifty round come through, maybe other than an ace. Jet, blue light here, able to make their way forward, looking for an elimination, able to find it. A phenomenal shot coming through very early on, putting us right into that 4v5. Blue light able to pick up that very early elimination. Firebird Jr. now trying to follow up and find it in the back line, but no, double elimination coming out here. Gonna be a phenomenal shot coming out, like keeping the brimstone down, and there goes the Sova as well. Just a phenomenal look so far, raise that Derek on that raise, excuse me, able to find one more. Just right now, it is an absolute bloodbath. A four v1 and things are suddenly looking bleak for becker and they're gonna run right into the jet but actually able to find the kill able to get the singer as well but that's another curveball and there were two great curveballs there by the phoenix on the side of tiffin to help keep that round in their favor there was one that came out very earlier on that helped kill um, i believe it was the brimstone they were trying to throw out their molly immediately got hit by that curveball and then flashed out and then killed so great place early on by arrow on that duelist row top of the leaderboard for their team right now yeah, absolutely. Things are definitely looking, I mean, relatively good. It's going to be a very aggressive round coming out from Tiff, and they're able to secure not one, but two victories under their belt. And so far, really made a decent name for themselves. Yeah, we'll see what the attackers want to do this time around. They've been very aggressive to going to A site. Uh, this time, they're going to be going to B. And one thing to note is that now, you know, because they saved Becker, they are going to have a bit of a firepower advantage. They are going to be able to go for the full buy, so they're going to have... Uh, full armor as well as better rifles so that that might actually give them a big advantage here it should give them a big advantage because obviously they've got you know if you got a vandal especially you've got better sight lines a lot easier one taps you can get with a headshot here and there but if you start spraying and praying with that or the phantom you're not able to hit your shots the specter still does a lot of damage right here. here so it's not just in the bag for becker necessarily because they have the better buy yeah, the Spectre actually my personal favorite gun in the game. It's one of my um, absolute favorites. I love using it, especially I play as Omen a lot. Doesn't mean I'm good at the game or good at Omen, but you know, I enjoy playing and I enjoy getting things in here. It's going to be a much slow burn. Round three here looking very reminiscent of round one. All, all 10 players kind of showing a little bit of respect for one another. Nobody wants to charge in and bite the bullet quite yet. This slow burn play style coming out and hopefully works in favor of Becker because they've really got to start getting some rounds on the board. It seems like, again, they want to go towards B, but they might do the exact same thing they did round one, which is go to A and cast a curse. As soon as you say it, it comes into fruition. And there is no mid to play for here, like a map, like Ascent or Split. So it's just one of the other three points. There's going to be a great jet cloud smoke that's going to just cut off that sight line and an opening pick for Tiffin once again. Yeah, absolutely. Tiffin able to just crack this fight wide open. They find an elimination early on, and that's going to be exactly what they're looking for in the value coming out off the back of it. Now, 5v4 is definitely still a loose scenario. We've seen this a hundred times over, and they're going to make it a 4v4. Blink, you miss it. Blue Light taken out of the fight there. Luca Light now pushing into the back line, able to pick up another elimination. Like I said, Becker, they were in that 4v5, and they're looking to make it a... 3v3, just kidding, as two of them are taken out, all of a sudden Tiffin able to take that back before I can even catch my breath and finish my sentence. Now in a 1v3, nope, on the line here, able to find one elimination, it's gonna be a 1v2, but the clock is ticking, time is running out. Things are, things have to happen right here, right now. Omen scope, the flame wall from Phoenix, gonna have to try to run oh. through it, get some information, almost gonna lose their life because of it, and with eight health and a dream, this spike is gonna go off, and they're not even gonna be able to get out with their life, try to go through the teleporter, but unfortunately, no. The last one left alive again. Same result. Could not get the job done. And it's just that Tiffin is playing so patient so far. Even though they were at that gun disadvantage. I said, you know, it's not over till it's over. Really depends on the sidelines you take as well as your how you rotate as a team. You saw there, they go for the full rotation. They get that first kill. There were some great plays by Becker. They got a few kills back. But then Tiffin just roared back in after they planted the spike. Then they took positions off point. They play very far back. They saved their abilities to the end. And... Now they're going to be able to get the full buy themselves, and Becker's going to be going back to the bank broke. Yeah, absolutely. Becker definitely just cannot get their money out of the bank. They are broke every single round so far. It has been essentially a massacre up to this point. They're definitely close, and I think if any player on the side of Becker is able to really capitalize in one of these matches, it's going to be no. I mean, we have seen elimination after elimination in the bleakest of moments. They just don't have the, the entire value to follow up off the back of it. We're going to see an immediate trade come through here. It's going to be one to one, 4v4 now. Spike being planted very early on. Definitely an aggressive strategy, but there's another elimination coming through for Tiffin. Things are just looking better and better. They're able to pick up one more and right now it is an absolute massacre gonna be pushed into that 4v1 the phoenix ultimate from arrow kind of put down the drain there not necessarily needed but definitely helping secure that round that's gonna be the fifth and final elimination that was a very clean and very quick round coming out from tim i believe that arrow actually got like one or two kills off the back of the running back i think we just saw it at the very end but um that was a four kill round there for arrow 
So, you know, th this uh, Phoenix kind of putting Kiffin on their back right now. And as I said, like, Nope has been the standout player for sure. But again, it's the, the agent, you know, that can really impact how much you can frag out. Duelists, obviously, they're really great for getting those kills. A lot of their abilities are damage based. Meanwhile, when you're a so, but you're just trying to get information, so you don't have as much to use. A lot of the combinations that I like to see is the Owl Drone with the Hunter's Fury, but you got to get your ultimate up first before you even are close to that. And so far, with all these rounds lost in a row, you're going to send to get it passively before you get it via kills. Four rounds are now, I believe, in favor of Tiffin. They have been on a rampage so far. Yeah, a rampage indeed. Definitely not a good look if you are Becker or a Becker fan watching at home, but there is still plenty of time for this to be turned around by Becker. They're definitely going to have to step things up a little bit and maybe just prepare for this play style we've been seeing from Tiffin. Though Tiffin is doing a great job finding those cheeky eliminations in those final moments. We definitely are seeing kind of a, a generic strategy coming out time and time again from Tiffin. They're kind of running it back in the same style. Style. They're coming from the same angles, but right now we're seeing just an absolute massacre once again. It's going to be a 4v3, so plenty of room for Becker to turn this around. But when they are in these moments to turn things around, that's really when we've seen them start to choke so far. They get very close. They're now in a 3v3, and things are going to be great for both these teams. With Becker, they always get into these moments. They always get into these positions, and then they end up fumbling toward the very end of these matchups. Yeah, it's like when you're on the goal line and the, the ball is fumbled right out of the end, and it's a safety or touchback in that situation. One thing to note is that there are ultimates online for Becker, so they do have a lot more utility than they would normally. Uh, they have the Neural Theft as well as the Hunter's Fury, so maybe if you hit a good recon bolt, left. if you're the Sova, you can be able to get out everyone. Uh, but no, Blue Light just going to be able to find the first pick. They're able to take out Sir Philmain, so now that Neural Theft is going to be offline, and that point is completely free right now for Tiffin. It's free real estate, Sethalance. It really is free real estate. I could not agree more that Cypher had his head taken clean off his shoulders, and now we are looking at a 2v3. The spike has been planted, and the clock is now ticking once again for this Sova and this race pushing into point. They are now at a very small timer here. They're going to have to push the, with aggression that we have not seen from anybody on Becker all day. They know somebody's hiding in that corner. They're going to put the pressure down. The bomb able to find Mr. Reliable, but Derek able to be taken out by Blue Light, able to pick up a double kill. Derek and Nope sent down the drain once again. And Blue Light, the jet player on the side of Tiffin, doing a phenomenal job so far. Yeah, so far, the duelists on the side of Tiffin have both been stepping up in different ways. I mean, the round advantage is just starting to build up over time. And there you see they're, they're both at the top of the leaderboard. The only difference right now is three assists for Blue Light and one less kill for Arrow. So still, both of them doing a very, very good job right now for this Tiffin squad. One thing to note there was that once you realize that the site is completely taken over, uh, I would have loved to have seen that Hunter's Fury come out a bit earlier. They used it late, and you saw that they did get the short distance teleport out of Mr. Reliable, but he was only hit once, so no harm, no foul there for that omen. They stayed alive till the end. They helped pick up those last few kills, and five rounds in a row, Seps. Right now, Becker, they, they need to get something going, because if they lose this round, at best, all they can do is draw before halftime. Yeah, you know, Jack, I was just thinking that exact same thing. They are running out of time. Halftime is coming up here, and they, I mean, they're going to have to look for a draw at halftime at this point. Things are looking very bleak, especially if they end up losing this round. That puts them in that immediate scenario where things are really going to start looking even worse. Mr. Reliable able to pick up that first elimination onto Derek. So, Becker, I mean, this is hey, this is probably your nightmare scenario here. Have to push into that 4v4. Well, you have to let them push into a 5v4, and then you're obviously at that disadvantage. We see Tiffin playing it a little bit slower than normal, which, honestly, I'm quite surprised. You're up five rounds? I mean, this is really when you start going for those highlight real moments no i like this play i mean i like that they're playing the same game that they've been playing the entire time sometimes they rush into point and they're very like put together there's a lot of sentry other times they just have roaming they'll send half to a half to b they'll see what site is best they'll try to find a default pick they already did find one earlier on but still they're rotating all the way back to b it's it's good you don't want to get sloppy you don't want to get overconfident valorant is such a momentum based game you lose one round here and then you think oh that's no biggie we're up by so much and then all of a sudden you're finding yourself tied up or even down oh. you see blue light still on their own not even needing the blade storm right now they are just popping off yeah, Blue Light not missing a headshot so far. I mean, every elimination so far has just been right into the dome of the enemy player. Nope, now trying to find some value, but a 3v5 with the spike planted. Things are going to start looking bleak, but Firebird Jr. able to pick up two before being eliminated, and unfortunately, the frag is just not enough once again. Tiffin able to put themselves up 6-0 to zero so far. Things, I mean, I cannot say it enough, things are looking relatively bleak for Becker. We're going to have to see some big changes here. And they have utility. They have a bit of an economy now after saving a little bit, so they are able to go for the full buy. So if they're going to win a round and start bringing things back, it has to be this one. Four ultimates versus four ultimates. I would say the lockdown might be the best one that's online right now. Music can completely shut down a point depending on when Raze decides to use it. But there is still a lot that can come out here from uh, Becker. I, I don't think we've seen a lot of ultimates, even though they've been holding on to them for a little bit. I think the Hunter's Fury might be the only one we've seen so far, actually, from their side through six rounds. So 
it's now or never really for them. As we said before, and at, at best they can do is tie this up. So every round is something they need because again, they forfeited that first game. This might be the first matchup we're seeing here on stream, but they're down 1-0 in the series already. Yeah, this could be the first and the last matchup we see from these two schools today because, like you said, it's supposed to be two maps, maybe even three, but it looks like we may unfortunately just be getting one. And now we see it coming out very quickly here. And oh my goodness, the ultimates are going to come flying. Brimstone able to send theirs out as well. Firebird Jr. picking up Arrow off the back. They now Blue Light pushing into the point, but no, it's going to be two eliminations coming out from Becker. This is the first time they've looked at this clean, but Epic Evan able to clean it right back up, turn a lead into a tie, and now they're landing the spike. And this is where Becker starts to crumble. They've really got to start working on this last minute defense. They need to be pushing in and they need to really be keeping an eye on this point because this is the only one we're really seeing be utilized by tiffin yeah we're gonna see the raise utility come through there's gonna be one going through hookah so they can go for a bit of a cancer approach oh. but they're immediately gonna lose everything coming from spawn side so now it is luca light alone with the empress can they 3v1 no, no. they cannot sap in uh, there was a great play at the beginning there i want to highlight it was the orbital strike like i said the top of the cast, I'm not a big fan of the ultimate. I don't think it gets as much value as people expect it to. But it was used right as uh, the Phoenix ran into the Cypher Trap. And even though you didn't get the kill from it, that was the first kill that happened. Arrow was the first one to fall. So they set themselves up into a position to win. They just didn't rotate quick enough. And I kind of understand the hesitance of this because we've seen how much Tippin likes to play split. But when you see Becker, you know, using a lot of smokes and stuff like that on B site, I think it's okay to at least send one more person over, maybe leave one roaming near A. But they just weren't able to do it quick enough, and they tried to go for the retake, tried to do a split approach there themselves, and Becker still, same story, down seven rounds. Yeah, down seven rounds, and this is where things really start looking bleak. We're going to have to see a complete reverse sweep coming out from Becker. They have any hope of taking this one home. Mr. Reliable throws out that very early paranoia, trying to find any uh, anybody on the enemy team without really knowing if anybody is there. But like these attackers, they get to make those slightly cheekier plays. Of course, they don't want to be pushing in and throwing around away because they want to keep this score as separated as possible. But, you know, of course, it's definitely a good thing to look out for. Try to get, like you said, that default elimination, just an elimination very early on to find somebody, and that could be huge at the end of the day. Right now, again, we're seeing that Tippin's playing very slowly. They're waiting for that first pick. Haven't been able to find it yet. Blue Light's kind of going back and forth. Not necessarily a full jiggle peek, but, you know, just a little, little do -si do there. And it looks like they are going to decommit from that A site, go back to B. It, it, one thing I'm finding very interesting is, although I think they favored A a bit more, they still look very confident on either side. I think there are teams usually in attack that definitely feel better or more confident going one way or the other but here it seems like they don't care and now instead of just going away they're just gonna oh, no, there we go there's the bait they're gonna just tp right out the blaze are gonna come out from blue light let's see if they can do any action on it this time yeah now blue light we said already a beast and i want to see this blaze be absolutely massive able to find one already but it looks like they're gonna be able to trade it out and right now the, the bullets are flying the defender for the first time looks like they may be able to turn something around becker finally able to put themselves on top of one of these matchups and that's gonna finally get them a point on the board Yep, it's so important. If you go into halftime five to seven, that's still a very winnable game. Uh, so if they can just win four more rounds in a row, it's a, it's a very difficult task at this point. But there's the first one. So you got the hard part out of the way. You saw there, there was just a bit of an overcommitment there by Tiffin. They ran in after yeah. playing very patient. The Blade Storms, they really haven't been working out that much for Blue Light, who's just been doing pretty good for the, out the whole match so far. But we saw the first time they immediately got bull, uh, bulldozed when they tried using it through smoke. Uh, this time they get one kill out of it, but the rest of the team falls around them, so not enough there. Now Luka like gonna play very aggressively in the showers. Yeah, Luka like, like you said, hiding in those showers, looking to be as aggressive as possible. And like you said already, this is all momentum based from the very start. You want to be looking out for that momentum, and now that Becker has a little bit of wind in their sails, are they gonna be able to turn a couple of these rounds around? I, I would like to say so for the viewer experience, but oh no, that's a huge there for oh. Aaron. It's gonna be straight out, but. I believe they put them in the middle trying to get the showstopper up, so there's going to be no loss of lines for online for Becker. Yeah, Becker, now things are going to be looking a little bit bleak. It's already going to be that 4v1 matchup and just an absolute disaster from here on out. I mean, seven points already on the board for Tiffin. It looks like they're going to be in here to secure eight. Is the Cypher going to be able to flank into the back line and get the job done, or are things already going to be looking rather bleak? Yeah, it's just going to be one lone Cypher left. We haven't really seen them plant the spike in a while as we still, uh, one kill there for still Phil main, but generally Tiffin's been really good at getting to points and just planning, and that's just so great for their economy. So, I mean, despite the fact that they've been winning every round anyway for the most part, even if they were losing a few here and there, getting that spike in is just so important. 
for your credits in there. This fight goes off. Let's see if there's another kill found out there. Uh, Sir Philman is able to get two, three, oh. almost four at the very end. So that's going to help pad your stats a little bit. It's going to force Tiffin to buy a little bit more. But so that economy, it's just so solid. It's not even going to matter that much. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Sir Philman waits till the very last second and just unleashes an absolute rain on that. Wow. That was my jaw absolutely hit the ground in that moment. Put themselves at the top of their own leaderboard on their team. There was eight eliminations. There's going to be three above Firebird Jr. Who we've seen pop quite a few times already. Definitely coming in with double and single eliminations in those clutch moments. But now we saw, we've seen potential coming out from Becker. They have the opportunity to win this. They just need to get a little bit more aggressive. Yeah, they do indeed. And that's how they kind of won that first round. That's how they're going to win here. You see, like just holding their angles. You have Derek. <laughs> I didn't say that was necessarily aggressive, but they did a great job with their peak. Oh. Then immediately they're going to lose. Nope. So you know, no advantage there, but immediately they're going to get it back. So if they can keep trading and being advantage in this trade, oh, great play right now from Derek. And yeah, let's say they, there you go. The trades are now in their favor. So they have an advantage, a player advantage for the first time in a while. I mean, they've had a, a few times that it's, this is how they won their first uh, round is they just had that big, Advantage now blue lights kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place and Ray's their killjoy is super weak already Yeah, the killjoy yeah, Ray's who is playing killjoy that'll be confusing as long as we say it But yeah, definitely a good thing to look out for they're super low and the elimination comes through from Derek Who's just on an absolute rampage this round the eliminations coming out left right and center from this Ray's Ray's takes out Ray's But who is also killjoy Derek able to find the ace. I said it before stream I want to see one of these happen today and Derek's gonna make sure I do thank you so much Derek What a fantastic moment for all of us casting here playing in the game and watching at home Just a fantastic job coming out and like I said, we mentioned this already Valorant all about momentum and that's exactly what Derek's looking for right now, looking to flip this momentum in Becker's favor. And a four versus eight round differential, it's still not great. I mean, 5v7 is much better, but it's it's definitely better than just getting swept, you know? Or just Absolutely. One or two rounds. So if they can get two more in a row, that's what they need. Derek has come to life, as you said, getting that ace brought them from a mid table on their team all the way top of the leaderboard for now, at least, and it allows them to buy. So. That economy for Tiffin, it's still built up. They'll still be able to go for a full buy. But if they lose one or two more rounds, that's when they're going to have to start sweating once again. Again, it's still a big advantage round-wise, but uh, momentum can swing in their favor. Oh. Derek, you're going to find one going to be traded out. So that is going to be Becker losing their best player early on. Yeah, their best player, absolutely. All four, all four other players on Becker have done phenomenal, but right now that race player has just been nothing but relentless. Time and time again, Derek has been fragging out of their mind. Firebird Jr. now trying to clean up off the back of an arrow gonna fall. We're gonna see that Phoenix taken out of the fight. A 3v4 in favor of Becker, and they've really gotta step up their game. They've gotta keep up the momentum they have right now. We see Firebird Jr. pushing in slowly, and Cypher kind of pushing in as well, blocking out that, that um, excuse me, that top left approach. Blue Light now flanking into the back line, trying to find any kind of elimination. Oh, excuse me, they're going back towards spawn. They're going the wrong way. Around. I got my teams mixed up in my head there for a moment, but blue light carrying the spike now pushing in It looks like they're gonna be rotating toward point a we see both Sova and cypher are gonna be there waiting for it to happen Absolutely, that Sova is gonna be going through showers. So there could be an attempt for a full rotation oh! so there's gonna be a shot right there for Silpha main so 4v3 it's winnable 2v3 now 1v4 actually is I'm not even saying the right things now It's a 1v3 <laughs> at the very end of the day. It's just epic Evan They're gonna get that spike plant money if they can back out of this and try to take a long approach They might be able just to go for the hunter's fury once they hear that spike uh, noise come out and they know it's being diffused But other than that they're, they're playing oh. the ball very aggressively almost caught out by the molly gonna be able to avoid it But I, I think there's a good idea that they're in there and if they use the hunter's fury from this close um, it's they're gonna be a caught out for them. Yeah. Oh, but that no, Sir Phil Main. Yeah, that, I think I think exactly what you had in your head going. I think that's exactly what needed to happen. Going down, going down a long. Play. Just, just go down yeah. a long and just tie back there. You know, I wholeheartedly that's agree. Just going down a long and using that ultimate there, just it would have been it would have been a massacre. I think you would have been able to find all three. Now, of course, he wouldn't have known how many were going to be standing there because we're in that spectator. We can see through the walls. We know who's vibing on which side. But I mean, it would have been absolutely phenomenal. It would have been a great play from Nope, honestly. And we've seen them do some pretty crazy plays already today. But we see, like you said, I'm, I'm going to say it every time: momentum, momentum, momentum. The comeback is now in full swing. That's three rounds coming out in the blink of an eye. The swap coming in, of course, at the end of this round. Now, is their offense going to be just as good? if not better than this new defense we're seeing from Becker right at the end of this. And if they can win this one, that'd be three in the row. There I is hope. That would be huge. They, there is definitely hope. They're already going to pick it up oh. with that first kill. That Empress is almost online now for Luka Light. There are three ultimates right now online for Tiffin, but none of them are that great. None of them are like ones that like will help you win a point outright. But we see on the other side, Becker, they're going to have three of their own. And I think the Neural Theft as well as that Showstopper could be huge, but Blue Light's going to 
bring out this blade storm again it hasn't been as effective as they have been and generally blue light has been popping off as well as arrow for tiffin their duels have been doing great because this blade storm has not landed as well yeah, i think this might be the third round in a row where arrow was the first one to take it out and now we see the night from come with firebird jr just way too ready for it able to find that elimination mr reliable finds firebird jr so another trade off a 4v3 in favor of that creates the now it's gonna be Starfail main again, able to pick up a triple kill, two headshots off the back of it, and just an absolute Switching massacre. Sides. Now only down by four, Becker finally coming back to life. You've got to wonder, maybe they just weren't warmed up. Maybe not having that first game, they just needed to get their gears moving once again, but Becker, I mean, these last couple of rounds, they have been on fire. And the other thing to think about is, you know, they're, they're having technical issues with their computers, so that can bring in some extra stress. You can kind of mentally uh i would say boom yourself that that would be of the course. gamer term for it you know you just like go into it not like as ready mentally for it but now that you've had a few rounds under your belt you've been able to win three in a row four in total as the defenders we'll see if they can get stuff going again this is more of a defensive sided map so it might be a little bit harder going forward for them to get into points especially when you have a cypher i feel like cypher isn't as good of a sentinel as a killjoy going onto both sides attack and defense like killjoy is a bit more versatile there but we'll see if cypher can get value out of the camera going to be throwing it trying to find someone belong and we saw some aggressive approaches last time on defense when it was becker doing it tiffin they're looking for a bit of aggression there but then they're immediately going to back out of it yeah, Tiffin, they're looking to get aggressive. It's that now or never moment for them. And Becker, they're going to have to put that hyper aggression down now that they're on the attackers. Like you said, defensive favored map. And right now, I mean, things are just... This has been this has been a great turnaround coming out. This is going to be a gold team and a plat team. I don't remember which is which, but honestly, all 10 of these players are playing so well that I could hardly tell you. This is the first... This is the... Blecker, Be Becker is Pla, excuse me, and Tiffin is gold. And right now, I mean, we're seeing this is the first streamed game coming out of the NECC Valorant Open season. And the uh, preseason just ended. These teams coming out, neither of them have a positive record, but all of them are looking to go for it. Blue Light able to find a double elimination onto Nope and Luca Light with that pistol. But Derek with the bomb able to find it. Firebird Jr. turning around. Epic Evan is immediately after Derek has been eliminated. So it's going to be trade to trade to trade here. A Phoenix and a Killjoy versus a Cypher and a Brimstone. A 2v2, a very intense one if I've ever seen it. Looking to plant the spike. Any moment now, Surfil main in the back line. Arrow able to take out Firebird Jr., but Surfil main able to find Arrow in the back. That was going to be an execution shot if I've ever seen it. A mid health Killjoy now defusing the spike. Cypher has to get in Surfil main. It's going to be now or never. You need to look out that spike defusal and able to find it. The clutch coming through from Surfil main. That is going to be another victory for Becker. They are absolutely on fire right now. Four rounds in a row now. I was thinking, man, if Surfil main can get a great flank here, this might be a clutch for them. They get it, they trade their partner out, but it's all right because they get the round and they're really starting to roar back into this matchup, this momentum train. You talked about how quickly it can get started and it has not stopped in a while. So Phil Bain going with the Guardian, a gun you don't see very often, but it does have a great sight line. Head in between between a sniper and an assault rifle. So that could be very valuable for them. And as we talked about, this is challengers. If you guys are looking for a bit of the higher team that's champions, which I think we'll be bringing you some action from later on tonight. But still, I mean, even if this is the flat average division, like you said, this gameplay so far, it's honestly Phenomenal. Been really good. Like, I, I have not seen any big mistakes in either of these teams. Just some solid gameplay. And so far, Becker, they've been able to kind of outduel these last few rounds. You yeah, know, I wholeheartedly agree. Like, we, I honestly can't praise these players enough. That gold level, that plat level, they are not playing like it. And I think that's why this match has suddenly become so difficult for both these teams. Tiffin maybe getting a little bit too confident in their gameplay after they, you know, they sweep, what, seven or eight rounds without dropping a single one. But Becker, all of a sudden, they get warmed up, the rust falls off, and they are nothing but phenomenal from that point on. Now we see Derek playing it a little bit slow. The attacker's kind of running out of time. They've got to get in. We see Brimstone carrying the spike. They're going to have to find at least one elimination. They're going to try to use some grenades to find it. Here they come flying in but no damage off the back of them go, the bullets will start flying and raise the first one to fall Derek and Luke Light able to pick up these eliminations it's going to be an immediate 3v5 and here comes the spike from Firebird Jr planted straight away that brimstone able to secure it on the point and Mr. Reliable hopefully he's reliable here because he's flanking into that back line trying to find the elimination but nope waiting just around the corner here come the bullets and nope able to find Mr. Reliable an absolute massacre coming out from Becker right now who have not found who have not been eliminated a single time this round Blue Light up against nope but nope able to secure that headshot once again, it's going to be epic. Evan looking a little bit epic, able to find Nope, but Derek following up off the back of it. The attackers, we see Becker securing, what is that, the fifth round in a row? I believe so. I think they ended that. Yeah, they, it's been yeah, it's been five rounds in a row now. They, they picked up one round a little bit earlier on defense. Then they just run the gauntlet since then. And it's six of the last seven to beat. Precise. That's an incredible comeback. Now again, uh, they, they got to buy last round, so they aren't able to buy this round. So we, we saw this last time. Now Tiffin, they'll really go for the full buy after 
they decided to just go for classics. But last time, even though Beck were the ones that went for the full buy, Tiffin won when they had the less powerful weapon. So I'm wondering yep. now if Becker with this momentum can keep it going. And one thing I noticed is that they're playing their attack very similar to like actually how we saw Tiffin do it. They are not just running into sites. They are playing very patiently. They are waiting for abilities to come through. They are waiting for the ability out. And now you're seeing uh, they know someone's there in market. So they're trying to span them out. But so far, they have not found any shots. Yeah, definitely not finding any shots yet. They know somebody's down there, and that's exactly what they're looking for. Becker right now, Arrow able to find wow, it. Finally man. finds Derek through the wall. One of the least favorite things you yeah, you know, you hate to see. But honestly, if you're a Becker fan right now, you've got to be losing your mind because this team all of a sudden looking for that clutch potential every day of the week. They're putting the pressure on. And if they can secure a victory here on this map, we're going to move all the way to map three. One of my personal favorites, Ascent, coming through. But right now, we see Tiffin looking to make sure that's not going to happen. It's going to be a 2v4. Definitely winnable in favor of Becker, but I mean, that's... That's a tall order to make it. That's a tall request to ask because they're really going to have to put it all on the line here. One thing to notice right now is about this attack from Becker's that they've split up who has their spike and who is the just trying to run it down long right now. So they now oh. have the spike in their hands. So that cyber that's trying to play long is completely caught off guard. It's going to have to play for that spike if they have any left. chance. So this is a great round for Tiffin to get back into this. And you see Surfle main. They're going to try to rotate for that spike. They're going to try to see if there's anyone on point. They see there's no one, but there's going to be a Phoenix waiting in the wings for them right now. Yeah, the Phoenix is just looking around, waiting for it to happen. Here comes the Firewall, trying to block off the spike. And even if the Cypher waits, we know that there's a Phoenix waiting right around that corner, aimed on the spike like crazy. There it is! The headshot comes through. Surfil main just unable to do enough. Arrow, really, I think the MVP of that round right there. Found three, if not four eliminations, I think. So definitely putting the appropriate pressure on. Things just, I mean, 10 out of 10 performance from all of these players so far. I think there just, there was a chance for Becker to get back into that round, but you gotta play together when you're so few in numbers, you know, strength in numbers, all that malarkey, it really pays off there because if they're able to find a trade, as long as they keep one alive, maybe they can get that spike planted. Even if they lose the round, they'll get a little bit money, more money towards, you know, next buy, but they're not able to get it down. So a bit of a misplay there that time around for Becker, but still a great comeback. It's now nine to six, that lead to go back to Tiff in a little bit. They're feeling themselves again. And like you said, I think they got maybe just a bit overconfident. They thought this map was already over now. They're like, hey, like, you know, we got to come to play still. The running back not going to find anything. And oh boy, this could be a matchup right there. But uh, nothing going to happen yet. I thought they might try to run back into mid, but instead they're just going to back up back into B. So no action this time. And it just seems like so far Becker, they were just playing the slow game. It's worked out a little bit for them, but didn't work out for them last round. You know, definitely did not work out last round. And Tiffin playing a very slow, a very patient mm -hmm. defense. I think that's a big difference from what we've seen coming out from Becker early on as they were running a very, not, not necessarily hyper-aggressive offense or defense, but they were definitely pushing into their attackers where Tiffin, they're playing very slow, they're playing very patient, and they're letting Becker walk right into them. They're playing these corners and then just lighting them up when they're lit. I mean, we are watching Luca Light right now, but he's, you know what I mean, the defenders are doing the same thing. And the aggression coming out very, very quickly. I think we just need to see more aggression from Becker. They're running down the timer until it's basically too late and then they have to really kind of tuck their tails and push in in a bit of a panic if they're pushing in more aggressively than normal they could find some great value off the back luca light now flying in epic evan able to pick up two arrow making a third luca light only able to find one they get two luca light now pushing into the point right now we are seeing the rain of pop off through the absolute surf field man able to plant the spike gonna get the points for that but no the defenders able to secure that victory once again the momentum shift coming back in favor of tiffin one thing I wanted to point out is you talked about the differences between defenses, and I think that the reason why Becker got much more aggressive near the end was because they just need to swap things up, right? They needed to find of anything course. that would try to work out, and it did. Uh, right now, for Tiffin, they still seem confident in their ability to play defense. It didn't go well for them in the first few rounds, but now they won two in a row. Their economy is stable once again, as it was for most of their attacking round, and Becker are going to have to go back to the drawing board, go again for that light by. We're finally seeing a Sheriff come out, which I think is the best light by again you can get as long as you're clicking heads. Because uh, that can be a one-shot, one-kill a lot of the time if you hit it just right. But Singers, Inspectors, Galore, and Tiffin have Vandals. All of them have Vandals, so they can get those one-shot, one-kills as well. Yeah, absolutely. And the Vandal, like you said, one shot, one kill, kind of notorious for that capability. Luka Light now flanking into the back line already. The spike plant coming out very quickly. I mean, basically 10 seconds now. It's going to be out in immediacy. We're going to get the points for that no matter how this round goes. Things looking a little bit weird. Everybody playing this round. I mean, this is definitely not what we've seen early on today. Luka Light able to find Mr. Reliable. Not looking a little bit too reliable with that gameplay we've seen so far. Being taken out time and time again. Blue Light taking out Sir Phil Main. Going to be able to tie things up. And quite a few players on the side of Becker. I mean, they are they are low health. We see the Brim Stone in critical condition. Derek able to take Arrow out of the fight. Ray is able to take Derek right back. Firebird Jr. finding Ray's. 
now it's just gonna be blink and you miss these players going toe to toe it's gonna be a jet and a sova left against a very low health sova and brimstone reina here to lead the charge the spike is going to be defused but they are running out of time blue light and epic evan able to pick up eliminations in a critical condition brimstone the weight of the world on his shoulders yeah, that was a great orbital strike. And the spike's gonna take out both Epic Evan and Blue Blitz. So that's a full team kill one way or another. That's very clutch. Uh, I think the mistake Tiffin made there is they did a great job of clearing out the point. They just waited for the team to come back, go for the rotation, and go as a full team to try to contest. But instead of going immediately to the spike, trying to just get the objective, they tried to chase kills. They didn't check corners, and they lost despite having that big gun advantage. So not only was it clutch, it was a very good thrifty round from Becker that helps them keep this lead only to three rounds that Tiffin still has. So every round you can get back is one you need, especially because right now, it, it, I mean, Becker needs double the rounds. Tiffin needs to win at this point. So right they're gonna Absolutely. get it done they do and again the orbital strike i, I just not praise it enough because if they didn't have that online that would have been a round one for tiffin yeah, no, absolutely. And I just, I want to point out that for those of you just joining us or for those of you watching that just may have forgotten, there was a point in this game where there was an eight game difference. And there was a point where Tiffin was up by eight games and Becker has clutched all the way from the depths of this game to finally get themselves into a three point differential. So this is a phenomenal job so far coming out from Becker. They really, like the gears have started turning and they are just kicking off. Absolutely. And now they're going to use the Empress early on. So Luka Light has kind of stepped up in this series. Been a duelist popping off. Derek has been struggling a little bit more, especially with those showstoppers. Hasn't really been able to find enough. And even now with the buy, they're going to be brushing onto the point once again. So they're playing very aggressively. And if they can keep doing I mean, that's what won them on the defense, right? Oh. So why not keep doing it? Absolutely, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Epic Evan and Firebird able to take a trade, but Derek picking up a double kill in the back line. Arrow and Derek respectively going toe to toe here, finding eliminations left, right, and center. It's gonna be a two v one, but we've seen we've seen Arrow do this time and time again. It's gonna be Arena and a Killjoy versus Arrow. He's gonna put himself on point and get immediately dismissed by Luca Light. A phenomenal job and a great offense coming out. It's gonna be eight to ten. These this is going toe to toe. If I have ever seen it, these rounds are becoming closer and closer every single time. Yeah, and now that's only a two-round differential, I think this is the closest the teams have been all series. There may have been another point when they were like this, but I mean, Tiffin, they're just losing their lead bit by bit there. They went for a light buy, but they still committed a little bit. I mean, they're buying SMGs, they bought a Bulldog, and I think if you're going to go for the full light buy, might as well just go for a full light buy instead of, you know, forcing at all. Uh, because I think now they're going to have to be in a much worse position. You see, they're, they're going to have the Bucky from Arrow, so that can be a hit or miss. I, I think the Jet would be much better to have the bucket because you can rush in or maybe rush out or get high ground but so they're gonna have it with their phoenix player and i mean look at the guns right now on the side of becker they're feeling good right now they're feeling strong and they're large in a charge yeah absolutely and i think you said um you don't know if there was a time that there was a difference in a, a difference of rounds of two and i think the only time we saw a two round difference was when tiffin was up two zero i think that's the last time we've really seen the game be this close and right now becker i cannot i cannot praise this team enough they are absolutely bringing this title to the metal and things are just absolutely insane this is just a phenomenal job so far they're gonna try to fire away with the marshall but you know marshall not the operator so it's a lot less risk unless you can land a headshot uh, we'll see if they get any shots in, but again, this is going to be an A plant, and now, you know, Becker, they realize we can just run in every time and they're going to give it up, especially when they don't have enough firepower to deal with us. Oh, they're, they're running back. Run back with the Bucky, can they find anything? Anything going to come through, they know somebody's around this corner, so they'll be able to come, Mr. Reliable, and here it comes, arrows running back, sent right down the drain. We've just seen that time and time again, that Reyna hiding right behind that corner, actually. We've seen that so many times. Ray's able to take out Firebird Jr. and able to find no with the leg shots. Oh, with the dismissal from Luke Light, the headshot from around. Epic Evan takes out Derek Surfill Main, finds Epic Evan Arrow, able to find Surfill Main. The shot's in the back. It's going to be toe to toe, one to one once again. This critical condition. Phoenix going up against this full health rain of the firewall coming through, trying to keep the spike alive, and they're going to be able to do it. Luke Light able to find the headshot onto Arrow again. These two, I mean, Luke Light and Arrow, every single round, they are toe to toe. And Luke Light able to come back out on top every single time. We are now looking at nine to ten. Things literally could not be closer. This is what Valorant is all about. Well, I mean, they could be a little bit closer if it was 10-10, right? Hey, Which it might on. be after next round. Uh, <laughs> but I think you, you had a really good observation was that we're seeing Luka like take that same angle every time in U-Haul and no one is checking it. They're falling for it every time. time. Yeah, every time. And they're just staying alive for so long, they're able to heal up because Marina has self heal ability. So a great job taking those off angles. Tiffin, you gotta check your corners every time. You cannot Absolutely. just blind peek into such a, 
a location like that that has very little angles for you to really have an advantage when you're walking through it. And Arrow going to be using the flame wall very early huh. on. I thought they might be trying to get the ult orb there, but they're not going to use it. So that's a lot that's of weird. utility out early on from a team that didn't need to give up that much. I mean, Becker, they're, they're, I think they're just causing Tiffin to panic a little bit now since they've closed the gap so much. Yeah, no, that was definitely an unusual thing. I think that flame wall early on, I felt the same thing. Okay, going for the ultimate orb, and then just walked past it. So that was definitely uh, maybe a miscommunication in team. Maybe somebody called for the Phoenix to go defend a different spot or kind of push in in a different area. That was definitely uh, definitely weird. You know, that was uh, that was uh, not something you'd expect to see a lot of utility down the drain, but now it's going to be that 10 points versus 9 points and things. I mean, our, our offense has to do something. Becker needs to put the pressure on right now. They, if they can secure this, like it, like you said, it literally cannot get any closer if Becker's able to come out on top of this. Oh, yeah, we're to a lot of utility coming out. Oh, there's going to be oh. Rays falling to the Molly as well as the Blast Pack. Raise That's my Rays. Exactly Rays. how Becker wants to start this now. It's a 4v5 and they're going to plant the spike. Absolutely, Ray's taking out Ray's, who's playing Killjoy. That will never not be confusing for you folks at home. And now we see the aggression coming out from Nope. They're trying to protect us, but the spike's already been planted. Arrow able to find Derek on point. Eric finally taking out one of those other attackers. And it's just a great look so far. Epic Evan able to find Luca Light. And just when we think Becker's going to be able to tie it up, Tiffin looks like they might be able to end this round in their favor. A 4v1 in this Cypher Surf domain. We've seen him frag before. Is he going to be able to do it again? Putting the pressure on. That's going to be two down the drain. It's going to be an open versus. Oh, it's going to be an open versus a Cypher. That's going to be a 1v1. The pressure cannot be more down the defuse coming through and surf main just cannot find the shots necessary able to stop the defuse coming out here looking for it a little bit more this half health omen and surf oh main God, with man. the clutch are you kidding me able to secure every single elimination necessary that's going to be a tied game becker is back to life it's going to be 10 to 10 and this could not be any closer we've seen seven do this a few more times now where they are playing for kills instead of playing for the objective it's fine holding an angle but you're just lining up there for Sil sir phil main to get those shots you have the perfect angle looking down from b long into garden you just stay there you let them line up like ducks in a barrel and somehow some way you get four kills at the end of that that was a, i think a 4v1 and yeah, they no, could have defused it mr level could have held it instead just goes for the bait after getting a halfway and Oh my yeah. goodness, Zeppelins. Oh my goodness, just, this just, game is going down to the wire. It really is, and I don't say this often, but if somebody's watching, clip that. Clip that moment. He's going to want to watch that a hundred times over. I promise you that. Just a phenomenal performance. And like you said, this is coming down to the wire. This is absolutely phenomenal. This could not get any closer. And now we see... I mean, this is going to be absolutely insane. 10 to 10, and we really might see a map three. There was a time where I thought, oh, this is this is over. Tiffin's got this in the bag. It was 8 to 0 at one point. And Becker has brought it all the way back 10 to 10. Yeah, the other possibility is it could be also overtime. We could see, you know, 12-12, and they've got to go two rounds in a row, depending on how things go. But this is the closest it's been since uh, the first round when it was 0-0. Zero, zero. And again, we're just seeing this is this is very interesting because while we're seeing a very patient approach on to A from Becker, everyone is there on the side oh. of him. Yeah, everybody is everywhere right now. That's going to be 2v2 down the drain. Firebird Jr. and Ray is making it a 2v2. Killjoy and Phoenix versus Grimstone and Soba. The pressure is on. Killjoy going to be eliminated. And Firebird Jr. comes in. It just rains havoc from the sky. Absolute phenomenal performance. Does not even have to rain that Hellfire. Going to be able to just put it out of pocket with that weapon. And just a absolutely phenomenal job. This is the first time we've seen Becker in the lead. Yep, and what a time to do it, too. Right at the very end, now they only need two rounds. Tiffin, I, they've been stuck on that three-round ratio for a while. Remember, at one point, it was seven to three. And I said, well, Becker, they need double the amount of rounds, but they have already... And they are doing it! Yeah, they have eclipsed <laughs> Tiffin. And we saw how powerful that orbital strike was a few rounds ago. Um, they didn't use it to get kills, but they used it as a zoning ultimate, which you can also use Killjoy's ultimate for on the side of Tiffin, but they have been struggling to do that as of recently. A lot of time, they think that using, the, using that J Killjoy ultimate is a way for them to get on to a point, but instead of waiting for it to clear it out. So they're kind of misplaying how to use it. Sure, I mean, you can get the lockdown. You can actually find people that are kind of paralyzed and can't shoot, but of it's course. never really about that. It's always about just taking position and being able to get a better rotation of it. Having been able to execute and now Tiffin is going to be finding themselves down. Yeah, and here we go. Finding themselves down is exactly where you don't want to be right now. We love an absolute underdog story, and that's exactly what we're seeing. We're
we're gonna see that brimstone hellfire finally come through and find that elimination very early on or not any elimination but find some damage very early on the spike plant is going to be coming through as well arrow trying to dump some damage onto point derek able to take out blue light this is the look arrow able to take out luca light as well so both these light players are going to be sent down the drain it's going to be a 4v4 the run it back is immediately eliminated phenomenal shot coming through here just a great job all the way around for all of these players it's going to be that 8v8 in this final moment two more eliminations coming through firebird jr looking to put this one on the back of his shoulders as well taken out by epic evan a cypher and a sova versus a phoenix and a sova the spike has been planted our defenders are going to have to make the magic happen but nope is going to say nope once again and find arrow it's going to be a 2v1 this sova has to clutch it's now or never in this final moment the hyper aggression is coming through that's going to be epic evan taking out sword but nope says nope once again it's going to be 12 to 10 becker in the lead they are doing i mean talk about a comeback story folks this game could not be more intense it's it's pretty incredible and i saw this earlier also from epic evan the the hunter's fury it's online right so it's similar situation you know that they're both coming from d longs why not just take a back position throw out the hunter's fury try to create space i, I know there's a bit of a time issue there because the spike has been right. for so long but those are situations where you can clutch out you don't have to take that gunfight you find one but you take so I'll much damage it. from it you're immediately clipped down after that engagement and now becker Somehow, some way, are one round away from taking this series, but it's oh! not over yet. Blue Light's gonna open it up with that uh, wall bang. Yeah, it's not even close to over down, but not out. Luka Light gonna tie things up right away. That's gonna be a brimstone and a cipher off I the board. Exactly. Surfil main making this even easier. Arrow down the drain as well. The eliminations coming out left, right, and center here. A 3v4 in favor of Becker. They are looking to make the magic happen here. Every single one is gonna come flying out from these teams. Derek finds Blue Light down the drain, but Mr. Reliable able to find Surfil main as well. It's gonna be a 2v3 still in favor of our team here. Becker, it's gonna be a 1v3. Raise the Killjoy player. Don't get that mixed up at home, folks. Raise the Killjoy player now has to put the pressure on 14 eliminations under suit but Derek being left alive is probably the most terrifying thing to see this player has been on fire all day long and they are not looking to stop here anytime soon Ray's now on the point in a 3v1 is exactly what this team needs or Becker is actually going to be able to secure the second round that's going to be one taken out that's going to be one less taken out as Luca Light able to secure that victory and Becker they find that victory underneath their belts we're going all the way to game three folks it's incredible what a comeback down 7-0 at one point, able to bring it back 13-10. to There are so many opportunities there for Tiffin to get back into this, to secure that lead and finish off the series. There, it, it, just another misplay that we saw from them, unfortunately. They try to go after the spike, but they're both holding the same angle. No one is looking towards market. The flank comes in. They lose priority on that spike, holding position there, and then the rest of the team ends up falling around them. So great job from Becker. They were down one map because of some technical issues. They had to forfeit it because it took so long. And that did not deter them. It was a slow start, but it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. And they finished stronger than anyone possibly could. So we've got a third map coming up in just a little bit. It's going to be Ascent, but we're going to be taking a short break before we get to that.
Welcome back, my friends. Things have been nothing but intense here today. Becker and Tiffin going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Tiffin securing an eight-round lead just to have it turned around in the blink of an eye, and Becker able to come back stronger than ever and secure a victory, pushing us into our technical map three, as they did have to sacrifice map one due to some technical issues. But now, I mean, we're going all the way to the wire. This is going to go into an endgame. Yeah, I mean, I I'm sure you're excited. You, you had said you wanted to see Ascent. Personally, I am sick of Ascent. I love it. I, I love it. So much of it <laughs> as of late. It seems to be usually a default map, but here it's actually going to be our tiebreaker. And like you said, Tiffin, they had built up this amazingly. They look so strong. They looked very confident on offense, which was surprising. Usually, uh, Bind is a defensive-sided map, like most maps in this game, but yeah. they did a great job. But then you could see that there were some cracks and that armor starting to come out. I think the biggest thing I talked about was that they would always play for kills instead of playing for the objective yep. when they go for a retake. So they'd be in a position where they were up in numbers trying to defuse the spike, but instead they would chase into U-Haul, they would chase into Hookah, they chase into B-Long, and those angles that were set up from Becker were always going to be better. They are just sitting there, they're waiting for those shots to come through. They're just waiting for something to shoot at, and then when something appeared, they would hit their shots almost every time. So Becker just played that a little bit better towards the end, but it's still anyone's game. It was still a very close match, 13-10. to 10. So even though Tiffin, you know, they're they're mostly gold versus the mostly plat team of Becker, yeah, the rankings, all that, it doesn't really matter in a team-based game like this. Yeah, absolutely. The rankings coming out and everybody wants to look good. You know, we saw the clutches, we saw the aces, but at the end of the day, the teams are definitely, it's, it's a team-based game, you know, similar. Uh, you see it, League of Legends, Overwatch, Valorant, these games, uh, Rainbow Six as well, they are team-based. Everybody can perform as an individual, but at the end of the day, your entire team has to be doing well. People can only carry so hard, people can only clutch so hard. And as we go into Ascent, I think we've seen a lot of clutch factor from Derek, from Sir Phil Main, a little bit from Mr. Reliable and Arrow as well, Blue Light. Like, we've seen a lot of individual individual shining moments but these teams are really going to have to come down rather than individuals but two teams of five and really start to perform on that team on that highest possible level i totally agree with you i mean valorant at the end of the day it's usually like who can get their shots off first but team-based communication is so important setting up plays setting up defenses all that stuff it adds up over time and i think one of the biggest differences was that you could probably assume that Becker, they were communicating a lot of where players were, because it seems like they were aware of where Tiffin would be coming from. So even if they lost a player, you'd be sacrificing your life for a bit of info, and that can go so far in a game like this. But we're going to be moving on from Bind on to Ascent up into the clouds of Italy, somewhere over Italy, I believe. And yeah. uh, nope on the Euro? No, it was just a bait. I would have loved to see that, as I talked about earlier, doing our little... Pre-game Rambo, I'd have loved to see a little Yoro action, even though I still don't think he's the best duelist in the game, but... Still an interesting one. Yeah, he's an interesting one, and I'm looking again at these key differences. Both teams, looks like they're going to be running the Sova, so Epic, Evan, and Nope going to be in that matchup once again. Uh, we might see some Jet on Jet action. Last time, Derek, they played the Rays, but they're going to be going up against mm -hmm. Blue Light. But the two biggest differences I see are the Smokers, the Brimstone versus the Omen, the Sentinels, the Cypher versus the Rays, and then we're going to have, I believe, yeah, the I Reyna versus the phoenix so there's yeah there's it looks like it looks like the only swap the only swap i think is derek swapping onto that jet mm -hmm. i think everybody else is yeah everybody else is on that same character so definitely uh and, and like you, you already mentioned those differences between the teams we're not seeing a lot of similarities but um the players themselves are playing what we saw last game so definitely keep yeah, an eye out for role. that yeah same roles thank you i can think of the word um <laughs> <laughs> but you know this is the first round things are going to be things are going to be a little bit unusual we're not going to see any buys obviously and if we do they're going to be very little because everybody wants to save up for those later rounds but tiffin i mean we saw their attack early on was great last game are they going to be able to carry that momentum over after getting steamrolled by becker in that second half yeah and sides have not sought from last game so tiffin they are going to be starting off on the attack becker they're going to be starting off on the defense and i'm wondering how that changed to their composition is going to play out. We'll see if there's any difference in performance later on going to the Phoenix instead, I believe. No, going to the Jet, actually. Going to the Jet. So we'll see if that Jet versus Jet matchup works out. I think it makes sense, though, because Agreed. Ascent is very vertical. Um, there's a lot of high ground. A lot less than Icebox, which luckily we're not seeing here today. But still, <laughs> there is a lot to contest. There is a mid, so we're going to see how that plays out. And for right now, the attackers, looks like they want to get on to A site, but Surfle Main has that camera set up and ready to go. Oh yeah, and it's going to be taken out right away, but that is all the intel they needed. Now they know somebody's around that corner. They're going to be pushing in. And something now that I've thought about swapping out of that jet from the Rays is we saw a lot of grenade kills coming out from Rays. We're not going to get that same thing from a jet. So that's definitely something to look out for as well, is are we going to see such a high level of performance coming out? So far, you know, they're not down quite yet, so the answer could still very much be yes. But no, as I say, a Derek taken out. That jet working not as well as it um, as that Rays just that one game before. A 4v2, Firebird Jr. trying to make it a 4v3. It looks like they might not be 
able to do so quite yet. Down to 41 health, trying to put the pressure on to really anybody at this point, anybody that they can see, but as long as Phoenix has that fire at his feet, he's going to be healing up the slightest bit. Nope, trying to push him, but that door says nope to nope, and the pressure has to be put on. Just a little bit harder, able to secure one elimination, but raised on Firebird. The attackers, that was a relatively clean run for them. I mean, this is what we expect from Chip, and they stood out hot last, and we'll see if they can keep it going. And like I said, I think Killjoy is much more versatile on of uh, course. attack and defense versus a Cypher. I mean, they both are more defensive zeros, but you can use that turret in a multitude of ways there. It was actually the final shot that got onto Firebird. You don't see a lot of turret kills, but when you do, you're thinking, oh man, I peeked out way too far there. They just waited patiently. There was some information gained from that Cypher camera, but it wasn't enough. And I agree with what you said about the uh, the raise earlier on. There were a lot of explosives, because a lot of grenades, a lot of uh, bomb buddies, a lot of blast packs, not a lot of rocket kills, which is a bit surprising. Right. Usually that ultimate is the strongest thing in raises kit, but in the end, they still got a lot of kills. So without all that explosive spam damage, they might be you know shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. And as you see Tiffin, like per usual, they're going to die after that, that first round. Yeah, shooting themselves in the foot and not shooting anybody on the enemy team. That's definitely <laughs> something I've noticed here. Is, uh, not able to find any eliminations quite yet, but it's only been one round. Plenty of time for this jet to really have some high-quality gameplay coming out. You see, I think there was a Sova in the back line there for a brief moment trying to put the pressure on. Now we're going to see a full rotation back from our attackers. Tiffin, they're going to be pushing in. It looks like they're going to be hovering around mid a little bit. They're really going to have to decide which way they want to go. And really, they're playing a guessing game of where these defenders are going to be. Yeah, and that was a great Sova utility there. I believe it was the Owl Drone, or maybe it was just the Recon Bolt, but it caught out Arrow, so they knew there was someone in markets. So they were just spamming yeah. in, they got a little bit of damage in, but now they've completely given up mid for the attackers, and they're moving on to A, and it's a very similar situation. I mean, they're going to have full control of this point. They haven't gotten any kills yet, but they're going to be able to set up very well. We'll see how Becca plays on this retake. Yeah, 5v5, but the timer is ticking for our defenders. Sova taking a little bit of damage as well on the defending side. Surfil main able to get a little bit of recon. I think got the dart in there. It looks like they did. Derek takes out Arrow, the first one already down in favor of our defenders. The blue light able to find Lucalite off the back. Kevin Mr. Reliable finds Firebird Jr. and it's a massacre. The attackers are not dropping anybody else quite yet. Surfil main, we've seen them clutch before. We've seen Derek do the same, but Mr. Reliable comes out reliable and finds, I think, two eliminations in that final defensive defense from our attackers, weirdly enough, but you know. When you get to that point, when you get to that point of planning the spike, all of a sudden those uh, the attackers really do become the defenders for usually what is that final fight. Yeah, I think it was a good call by Tiffin to mostly buy Stingers over the Spectre. Um, I mean, the Spectre's more expensive, so I think this is a better gun, and sure, it has got that silencer, but the Stinger is just so good right now. It's kind of broken, in my opinion. It has great range if you zoom in. Uh, that isn't a full auto shot, but it actually has great accuracy, and then when you're at close range, you can just do so much damage of how quick the fire rate is. It isn't as, you know, f quick as maybe an Odin or an Aaron Ares, but it's a lot of damage there, and you saw Tiffin able to clean up pretty cleanly they're gonna try to play mid again which i think this is gonna be the biggest difference between the last match and this one is there was no mid they were the teleporters but they weren't yeah. really used that much by the end so mid control it's so important if you can take over that market area it just becomes like such an easily winnable map because you can go either way you want at that point yeah, absolutely. And this is completely unrelated. Nobody's using it, but I hate the Ares. I just want everyone to know that. Um, I hate that gun. I don't like it at all. But no, no. Uh, anyway, the move, yeah, no, I just think that gun, it's, it's something else. It's it's one of a kind. But moving in, like you said, you want to get possession of that market. And now that using the mid, you get to really, like I said, there's a, there's a lot more strategy to it. Instead of there's a 50-50 chance of you going away, now there's a 33% chance of which way this oh, team's going to yeah. be pushing in. And of course, you can get the recon, in particular with the cypher, to really have that aggression moving forward and know when somebody's coming from a certain direction. But otherwise, I mean, three... Three is more than two. I mean, it's as simple as that. There's more ways to go. It's going to be harder to pinpoint where these attackers are. Firebird Jr. and Derek putting the pressure on, able to secure two eliminations. It's going to be a 4v3 in favor of our defenders. But the damage coming out from Ray's, the double headshot kills. Killjoy on the Ray's, able to find that double elimination. Sir Phil Main finds Epic Evan, putting us into that 2v2. An Omen and the Killjoy versus a Cypher as Mr. Reliable finds Luke Alight. Sir Phil Main puts the pressure on a Mr. Reliable. We are looking at a clean 1v1, my friends. The spike has yet to be planted. Now, everybody, I can't see chat, but I want I want you guys to be interactive there let us know who do you think is going to be able to win this because this really is i mean down to the wire right now we're seeing a repeat of game two technically game one here today but you know we're seeing a repeat of what we've already seen tiffin a great start early on and then becker just comes to life and reigns just absolute fury from above now we're seeing the killjoy the rotation facing the wrong way cypher knows they're over there gonna have to find this elimination sir phil main the clutch factor if i have ever seen one but this killjoy raise is waiting oh sir phil main with the headshot coming through Clean as ever, gonna be able to land this defuse, and that is gonna be a round secured for Becker. 
And I'm shaking my head after that play because I know that Killjoy has most of your utility. She's yep. got her drone. She's got her alarm bot. She's got, uh, I, I don't actually know if she had her uh, nade. But beyond that, I mean, she had a lot. There was of a lot of kit. Yeah, you set up your turret to cover the angle that you're not. So then you have an idea of where they're coming from, right? And said, uh, try to hold an angle there. Cypher just walks in circle me and just goes for a little bit of a jiggle peek, gets a headshot, and is able to clutch out. And again, it's just, uh, we're seeing these misplays kind of start to add up now from Tiff, and you're seeing a little bit Agreed. of a difference in uh, team play and kind of like how they're using their characters the best that you can. So they're, I mean, they're, they're, that was very winnable for Tiffin, but they're going to give a, a round back a lot earlier than they did on Vine. So yeah, these things are staying close at the beginning. Yeah, no, things are things are definitely closer than we saw. You know, there's no eight to zero this time, but instead it's going to be a two v one. Great reaction time from Arrow. They're taking that drone right out of the fight, but Arrow able to find Firebird as well. The Arrow coming up, a great shot. That was very smart. The Arrow, not from Arrow, but from Sova. You guys know what I mean. Anyway, the attacker Killjoy moving forward here, and now the spike yet to be planted once again, trying to put the pressure on. But there is smoke on every single part of this point. They're going to be pushing in to point B, trying to probably find the plant soon. Mister Reliable and Blue Light able to take out two of the defenders. Going to be a two v five. We've seen an ace and a clutch but now i mean even as reino on lucalite all you've got is this pistol and you are living with a dream here yeah they're looking for a flawless round here and they used the lockdown perfectly that time around they didn't use it as a way to get in they waited until it was used completely and they're able to break it down they're able to rush it afterwards and is able to find wow. two kills it's going to help their economy a bit on the side of becker but arrow going to get their third of that round so they played that much better than they had previously with the lockdown Agreed. Ultimate. But they're, they're learning, which is good. They're adapting, they're uh, innovating, and if they continue to use ultimates like that as a way to get on the points but not be too impatient with it, they're going to keep getting these rounds up. And even though they gave one back a little bit earlier on, they're still up 3-1, to one, and they have four ultimates and a bit of a better economy. You know, absolutely. And I think we saw some great gameplay from Reina there. We talked about pop-off potential. And I mean, even the ability to secure two eliminations while oh, yeah. five enemies oh, yeah. are staring you in the face. I mean, that's yeah, that's incredible. If your shots, you can stay alive for almost ever because you get the choice between your healing or your in uh, vulnerability for a little bit. You know, you get into that kind of like wraith form is the way I describe it for those of my friends out there watching who know Overwatch very similar. You're kind of like a ghost. You can just kind of go around a little bit quicker. Oh! Oh! Oh, that's so unfortunate. We just checked the very end of that. It's very hard being an observer, but they're able to get just the best Kobe shot I've ever seen all the way over the top. And now it's a 4v3 as they go on to A. I know you guys can't see us, but both of our jaws simultaneously just fell open. We just caught the very end of that shot, and that was absolutely amazing. A Hail Mary play if I have ever seen one. That immediately made it a 4v5, and while they may have lost their omen, they're still up in the numbers because of that play. So just a phenomenal shot. Firebird Jr. able to find Arrow off the back of it as well. So now the aggression coming out. It's going to be a 3v3, a 3v2. Blue Light able to find Derek. One jet takes out another, and nope. Trying to cover the point as aggressively as possible. They know somebody's down there. Now they just got to find a Firebird Jr. goes for it, but nope. It's going to be Blue Light able to find that elimination with the help of Raze, who's playing Killjoy, and it's going to be absolute chaos. A 4v1 here in terms of points. Plenty of time for Becker to come back. We saw that firsthand, but Tippin taking taking a comfortable lead right now. Yeah, I'm not counting them out anytime soon after what we saw from them on Vine, but that was just a great setup. I mean, that shot over the edge, like, oh, just that, that's flawless. just an amazing jet play, yeah. So great job there by Blue one of the most consistent members along with Arrow so far for Tiffin. If they can keep it up, they'll stay ahead. I think another thing I want to point out was that there was an Ares buy on the side of Becker, and I'm not sure where the Sova started out with, because I was just so... like my, The only thing I think about now is that jet play, but the, you, if you're going to be buying the Ares, you want to be playing B Garage. There's like yeah. a specific graffiti thing that you just want to spam through, try to go for some wall bangs, but now they're not going to be able to do that because look at the economy. It's completely flipped out of their favor now. Tiffin, they've got the guns. Becker, they don't, but we have seen a few 50 rounds here and there, so yeah, no one's out of this round just yet or this game. Yeah, no, down but not out indeed. A three-point differential. We've seen them come back from much more than that. The pressure being put down, the firewall comes through. Derek able to find one, dashes through the wall, but sees might be caught by a stray bullet here. That's exactly what's going to happen. Arrow's taking out Derek, but Firebird Jr. able to find Arrow off the back of it with the headshot of 4v3 in favor of our defenders once again. Now, these are the scenarios where they very rarely lose these. This is really when they start to come back to life. They get the numbers advantage, and then they're able to force the momentum in their favor. And if Lucalite to pick up Ray's playing kill joint here, that could be huge. That's exactly what's going to happen. And now the turret is out, but Lucalite able to secure that very early elimination. 
trying to find one more, gonna be able to do so. I mean, it's a 4v3, but it's basically a 1v3. Luka Light basically carrying this initial matchup. Let's see one elimination come through from Blue Light, but Firebird Jr. secures that victory. That's gonna be a no wait. Actually, I should wait till they defuse the spike before I make it official, but that's gonna be a 2v4 here in terms of points coming off. A phenomenal job so far from Becker. They get that thrifty win and just a phenomenal job that's gonna help them add those points up. I think I might have cast your cursed around a bit there, Seb, because I said, you know, hey, we've seen it before, but then they've gone thrifty before, and there it is, once again, I mean, again, I just, Tiffin, they think they have this huge advantage, so they run in, but there's still abilities online for Becker, they get a, a few free guns here and there, they rush on to A site, they don't set up very well, there's that Raina that's just lurking in the corridor, and now look at the ultimate advantage for Becker, as well as the fact that they're able to buy equally, I, I mean... Becker, they're roaring back to life, and you see there, the gun's actually going to be a little bit now in Becker's favor, because Derek pulling out that operator, and I don't think we saw an operator at all on Bind, which is a bit surprising, because especially for a Heaven, that's a great sightline for that point on Bind, but here it is now, um, out on a Sen, and usually you just want to play mid with it if you're on the defense. Yeah, absolutely, and you want to be playing mid as much, pretty much as much as you can on the defense, like you said. Mid, obviously, we've said this a hundred times, it makes this map so much different than what we've already seen today. Two approaches to three, and that definitely changes both play style on the offense and the defense. Derek and Firebird Jr., they're able to finally find an elimination onto Mr. Reliable. The spike has already been planted. The timer is ticking. Things are going to have to be absolutely incredible here. They're going to have to see some shots coming through, and we see the Knife Storm is ready from Jet, but instead they choose to not use that quite yet. Here comes that Hellfire once again from Firebird Jr., putting the pressure on the aggression. Coming through Jet, incredibly low on the side of our attacker. going to be eliminated a 4v2 in favor of our defenders. They're looking to bring this round back just like the one before. And if you're too, there is not just very online, so there it is. This is what I'm oh, going to see no! so long. They're able to find one. They almost find it, but it's going to be Ray's fighting the kills. Now it's a 2v2. That final one's just very, it's not going to connect, but look at how weak the members are. Oh, no! Ray is behind four. Oh! And that Ray's. You like to say, uh, the Ray's on Killjoy. Just, uh, Ray. Know. Yeah, Ray's, Ray's playing Killjoy. Kill just just so everybody at home never gets that mixed up. Ray's playing Killjoy. Just finds a quad at the end of that, just when Becker was going to make it a one-point differential. We see a quad kill, almost an ace, but not quite, coming from Tiffin's Ray's playing Killjoy, and just a phenomenal job. I, I, I mean, I, I've I said phenomenal like so many times at today. this point as, as their coach, because the things that I was saying earlier on, now they're starting to do it, and they're starting to capitalize it, so uh, I'll send you guys my PayPal later on. Don't worry about <laughs> it. But yeah, I mean, they're starting to improve. They're starting to make these plays that I was saying this should do. That's how you use Hunter's Hero. You back up, you create space, you get some damage, and then Ray just goes in, gets four kills, and now they have a lockdown, so they have another ultimate they can use. And here it is. I guess I'm Castle cursing it into existence once again. Looks like they're going to wait for it. And now it's down. We'll see if they play this patiently like they did before. Like you said, the lockdown is here. That's exactly what they needed. Firebird Jr. picking up one blue light, finding another Luka light, and blue light going toe to toe. Going to find the elimination on the headshot onto Luka light. So it's going to be a 3v3. They really need to be getting rid of blue light. Never mind. Okay, as I say it, it exactly happens. I was going to say they need to get rid of blue light because they are fragging so far. Finding insane eliminations every time. Race flying Killjoy, able to plant that spike there and find that elimination early on. Mr. Reliable trying to teleport in. It looks like they're going to be able to do so trying to find that pressure put themselves in the corner so somebody flanks are able to find that elimination off the back of it but no it's going to be sir phil main again on a rampage the spike has been planted but not for long here comes nope to say nope once again and take that spike off the ground well, that was a bit of an awkward short uh, distance teleport there for a yeah, I, agree. Wow. I agree i wasn't they were kind of putting themselves in a bad position because you can't really do anything once you're going through that animation and they were out in the open a little bit outside of boathouse so Bit of a misplay. They were still going to be very hard point to hold. Uh, because I don't think there was any of that raised utility that we talked about a few rounds ago online. I don't think they had any of that this time around. So they didn't play patiently. I, I, they did it before where they waited for the lockdown to go through. I think there's a shock dart that may have came in. Or, I can't tell if it was a shock dart or a hunter's theory. There was something that came in from Sova that kind of disrupted that push from Tiffin. They started panicking and they ran in. And every time they've done that so far on this B site, they've almost immediately been spammed down. Yeah, and the spam, I mean, it, it, you get to a certain point in every game where spam is kind of an important thing to look out for because spamming can really give you an objective. We're going to see Jet go for it again. Oh, Sir Phil Main with the headshot. Jet uses the ultimate double jumps into the air and Sir Phil Main was waiting for it. That was a fool me once situation and Sir Phil Main was not going to let you fool him twice. A phenomenal elimination coming through early. Something that should have ended in favor of our attackers is immediately going to be shut down and put in, in favor of our defenders. They're going to find Arrow, arguably the two strongest players in terms of what Tiffin has presented for us today are now out of the fight. We've seen Raze on Killjoy perform pretty effectively quite a few times, but they're really going to have to clutch out. A 3v5 is going to be pretty difficult. It is indeed, and they, they've also been so, so, and they're using so much utility that I am surprised the rotation hasn't come out sooner from Becker. They've got two right now on A, and then 
three around oh. and now now they only have you know two for the attackers so it looks like they're pretty confident at just holding their angles um i still would have liked a bit of a fast rotation just to not give up too much but you know you, you can give up be a little bit still have one in mid like they do you see the jets playing um right outside so if they try to rotate out they may be able to find something left. there so this is just a great play a great round for becker all around they don't really have to do much now they just have to wait it out yeah absolutely they're just gonna have to wait things out and i mean either the timer hits zero or they go in and push these eliminations it's gonna be a 2v5 sova has the spike but i mean realistically even with a killjoy and a sova i mean you can't just push into a 2v5 and hope that you win it you're really gonna have to find some high value play off the back of it 10 seconds left to do anything and it looks like nobody's say. yeah it looks like nobody's gonna be doing anything here uh not exactly the most interesting round but probably a good call in all honesty probably a good call from tippin they're gonna save they're gonna make sure they get to hold on to some things get some points and they end up not giving any more points to becker so that's that's kind of what they wanted to do there and that's a bit of a stalemate at the end i was a bit surprised that becker didn't chase and try to find out agreed. Those agreed but i think it was a better play that they played it safe i mean why give up any of their economy why be forced to buy after a great round so even though you know they don't get rid of any economy for Tiffin, they don't force them to buy any more than they'd have to. It's just a smart, safe play. And when you're trying to get these rounds back, sometimes instead of being super aggressive and trying to force plays that don't need to happen, playing safe is the way to go. As you see, Tiffin, their economy is still not so great right now. So even though they keep those two Vandals, the rest of it is just SMGs and shorties. We did see a shorty kill come out actually a bit earlier that didn't get tall, but uh, Becker got it. I believe it was their Soba player who got yes. the shorty and was able to pick up a Vandal. And you, you, you hate to see it, and you also love to see it because the shorty is such a weird gun. Only two bullets, but close range. Here's another close range attempt. Oh! And there's Eric oh! two. Yeah, there go. I rampage. Only able to find two, but like you said, I love the shorty. I think it's hilarious to kill people with it because everybody gets so mad. But Epic Evan able to find Firebird in the in the kind of the chaos there. Derek, I mean, just put their life on the line to secure two eliminations and a two for one trade obviously going to be better than a one for one or a zero for one but right now we are seeing just a lot of predictability i feel come from tiffin i think we're seeing mm -hmm. becker kind of constantly adapt to the these similar plays that tiffin is going for time and time again like look exact same thing happened we're back to that sova and killjoy being the only two left alive this is something we're very familiar with. They always leave these two in the back line, and then the other three get obliterated early on in the round, and then nothing can happen off the back of it. Difference here, though, is that it's very winnable still for Tiffin if they make the smart play. There's two right now on B. There's only one near A, near mid, so if they can get the Cypher down, they know there's one there. There's going to be a lot of damage. Let's left. raise again. Look, you can have that turret out there. Just, like, throw it out. See so if you can find any shots of it so that you know there's someone around there. And now that they're both weak, it went from winnable oh. to very unlikely. Yeah, that was definitely a cheeky play. And his note gets eliminated, or it finds an elimination onto Epic. It's going to be a 2v1. Check your corners, check your corners. And there's no check on the corners. I mean, it's really going to be as simple as that. Raze walks. Yeah, definitely unfortunate to see. Raze on Killjoy walks right past somebody who's waiting in arguably the most common corner for somebody to be hiding behind. I saw that twice last round. I mean, yeah. Derek Cole double kill stood by the fact that they were sitting there waiting for something. Um, we saw, like, I think I've seen Derek kind of just dash into a wall twice now, so not getting yep. as, uh, far away as they're wanting. But still, it's a lot of value, still gets a better trade. And there again, just sitting in the corner, I believe, was it Luca Light at the end? Yes. Yeah, it yes, was Luca Light. Luca sitting there and they'll, they'll take that every day of the week i mean they lose one member but it's a trade you're waiting for them to make the move in they think they're safe you're right behind them and it, it's just like little things like that that add up so much over time and i think that's why oh. eric now gonna dash in after the off kill that's a big misplay i'm not sure if they were trying to dash out I think they were trying to go back and they went for it yeah. instead. Yeah, no, the misplays, all of a sudden, like the first game that we cast earlier today, everybody was phenomenal. All 10 players, there were so few misplays. But every single round so far, these players are really, the misplays are really starting to come out and come out in serious numbers here. A definitely unfortunate dash, but I mean, you still found an elimination at least once. You gave your team a brief moment, a brief glimpse of hope there. It's going to be tied up, so whichever team wins this round, going to be able to put themselves back into a secured victory position. 60 seconds left on the clock. Epic Evan able to plant the spike for the first time in a long time honestly we haven't seen the spike planted in quite a while a 4v5 in favor of becker blue light gonna make it a 3v3 all of a sudden the pressure comes out once again sir phil man able to find epic evan and as long as blue light is alive honestly there is hope because this player has been nothing but cracked all day firebird as well just as cracked if not more able to take them down in that kind of little 1v1 2v1 scenario but we see becker once again securing a victory for themselves putting themselves in the lead here Luca Light just seems to have really good map knowledge. They always seem to put yeah, themselves absolutely. in a spot where they're on the flank or have a great angle or just in a corner that's not being checked. So there you saw they were rotating all the way through the attacker side, able to get some fire, and then you're pincered.
it was very hard for the attackers to do anything. Tiffany didn't really know how to approach that, and then it was just Blue Lake stuck in hell all alone against three members. So even getting one kill, they would have been impressive. Didn't get it at the end of the day, but it was a great effort. And now Becker, they've taken the lead earlier on than they did last time on by. It's still a very close series, but we're seeing there's going to start to break apart. I mean, the economy is so much better right now. For Becker, it's completely flipped. Tiffin, they had the advantage earlier on. I mean, the ultimates are a little bit more in Tiffin's favor, but I don't think you commit the run it back. The run it back especially don't commit. You could try to use the Hunter's Fury if it's close. Uh, we saw it being used very smartly last time. We go ahead again. Oh! Me and that, that's, that's actually, oh, they get caught out. That's the first time I've yeah. ever seen them get punished for their positioning in a while. Yeah, they also missed the headshot, which was just not very good. They, they, they were a little bit too far to the side, and they missed the headshot on Mr. Reliable. So definitely I was so sure they were going to get that kill, see. and they didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely mildly disastrous, honestly, because now we see the lead coming out for Tiffin in, in just terms of numbers here. A little bit of damage put onto Mr. Reliable, but not enough to really make that worth it. You know, it's really going to take a couple of shots, and now falling into that 3v5 is Blue Light once again winning that jet duel, taking Derek out with the headshot. And Epic Evans looking for the plant. They know it's coming through. Surf Hill Main finds Epic Evans now at 3v4, a winnable scenario, 2v4, raise once again, raise on Killjoy, finds that elimination onto Sir Phil Main, and the pressure coming out here once again, our attacker is finally going to be able to possibly secure a victory for themselves. Orbital strike is just not that now they know there's going to be someone there oh. who able to find the kill because they saw the molly come out, just barely able to avoid death there, so now it's just nope, and that is all that there is, there is going to be the nano swarm. it's going to be destroyed very quickly, so, I mean, I think if you're nope at this point, you try to go for kill to get a good economy, you don't want to be giving up too much. You only have eight words now, so if you don't find an immediate headshot, it's going to be pretty bad. That's a play we saved over a few times where they try to bounce uh, oh. the shot dart off of the box into hell, but that time isn't going to work out. That was just a great round from Tiffin, one of the strongest we've seen in a while. They played decisively, and they had really good rotations. We don't see them go all the way around the map a lot, but that time they went all the way to a heaven, and you saw how well it worked for them. They got the orbital strike out didn't get any value that time around for the brimstone on the side of becker so we're tied up once again and you know some of those mistakes we saw from tiffin earlier on now we're seeing becker do something similar yeah, we're definitely seeing a lot more mistakes. Earlier on um, on that last game, we talked a lot about how this is a gold and a plat team, and we really weren't seeing gold and plat plays and mistakes. But now, a little bit more on Ascent, I feel we've seen kind of some really simple mistakes. You know, check your corners, dash backwards, don't dash forward. Kind of just very little things. So a couple of mechanical mistakes that, of course, you know, everybody's going to make here and there. But as we move in 6v6, this could not be closer. The score, technically one to one. Becker did have to sacrifice that first game due to technical issues. And now they were able to secure that second game. So now we're all the way to game three six points on both sides and now it really does not get any closer than this and now it was just half time so no sides have swapped now tipping gonna be trying their crack at defense this is where they crumbled last time around on mine so we'll see how it pays off for them this time around see becker looks like they want to go very aggressively on to a you see the rotations already come out for the most part there's just a lone silver right now on but everyone else is around the a side so i would oh. like to them try to go for a big flank and now that they have the numbers advantage too why not just have that silver rotate all the way through attack or something Absolutely, I think that would be quite the play as well. Firebird Jr. going to be able to find Mr. Reliable. It's going to be a little bit of a mix-up here. Firebird able to plant the spike, and wow, Blue Light with a phenomenal headshot onto Nope. But Luca Light with a headshot of their own back onto Blue Light. Ray's now sneaking onto the point. Arrow trying to defend a corner here. Just so close to seeing that Cypher, but not seeing them quite yet. Arrow able to find Firebird. The spike has already been planted, so the timer is ticking once again. Luca Light on that rampage, as always, able to find that elimination. It's going to be a 2v2. Both Ray's on Killjoy and Cypher here. Very on the on the edge of death. Surf Hill Man able to find that Ray. It's going to be a 2v1 here in favor of our attackers, and they are able to secure that victory and put themselves in the lead. Becker, win or lose, they are putting up so much more of a fight than we saw earlier today. Absolutely. I mean, they brought it back, right? They had an epic Truly. comeback, but they've been much more back and forth here. They, they've come out a lot stronger out of the gate and now taking a lead the second time, I believe, but they've only had a one-round lead so far at best, so... See if they can hold on to that a little bit longer. And again, Sir Circle Min on the Guardian. This is a gun you don't ever see very often, but it worked wonders for them last time around when they use it. So I I'm not surprised they're buying it again, though. If, if they lose this round, uh, their economy in particular is not going to yeah. be It's a big risk to buy a rifle this early on, but we'll see if they risk it for the biscuit. And if that biscuit is obtained for now, just going to see how the second round after the side swap works out.
2v1 here, Luka Lev's gonna head right into this, there's no idea, and there comes the pressure, Sir Filmane able to find the double, the payment already worth it, the gun able to pick up a double kill, and like you said, I was gonna say that same thing, if they lose this, that's a huge waste on their economy, Luka Light very confident nobody was in that corner, that was that was definitely a risky play, but, you know, confidence is key, you eliminated everybody in the area, Luka Light already planting a phenomenal look so far, things are absolutely phenomenal, Raze is definitely putting the pressure on as much as they can, but they did, they haven't bought anything, they only have so few weapons, and as Derek finds the elimination onto Mr. Reliable, this is starting to look like possibly i mean a perfect round never mind never mind <laughs> raise his raise finds the elimination onto derek definitely as i say it kind of maybe maybe cast a curse that a little bit but i didn't even get to finish my sentence before it happened and there we go firebird jr takes raise out of the engagement a phenomenal look once again eight to six becker this is exactly what happened last time when they swap onto that attack they take the lead and they just sprint with it yeah it seems like tiffin looks more comfortable on their attack than their defense which is a bit surprising because i think valorant generally is a defensive sided game usually if you're on defense first you feel a lot more confident but so far they just have not been able to put up the same performance they did on their attacks and we talk about the risk of picking the guardian i think it actually works out in their favor because there's a there's there's no way that tiffin's gonna buy there right so at that point right. you can just get the guardian then you've got a better gun going to next round even though you bought that time and now we'll see if that pays off you see that for tiffin because they saved last round they are able to get a full buy so a lot of fantasy. I think there was a bulldog thrown in there, so I think that there was a bit of a there was a mistake last one. Uh, I think it was Ray's actually that bought a frenzy, so it's only four hundred credits, but that adds up or I guess adds down over time. You know, it's a little bit less than you'd have this time. So you're gonna have to fit to the bulldog. Um, that's what Evan with it, so oh! now Epic Evan's gone. Epic Evan just down the drain there. Lukalite turned the corner and unloaded that clip. A phenomenal shot, honestly. That could have not been better. And now we're watching Raze on Killjoy once again, trying to put that pressure on with the team appropriately. It's going to be a 4v5 in favor of our attackers. They've got that presence on the point. The spike plant coming through, and it's going to be completed. The timer is now ticking once again. We see a very small amount of time for our defenders to push in. But now they, I feel like they have a couple of people that will really utilize defending a point. I think Phoenix is great to defend a point with that fireball that he can throw on the ground. And I think Raze on Killjoy would do a great job as well doesn't have that ultimate online, it can really put the pressure down. Especially with Blue Light finding Nob through that wall. I, I hate when that happens to me. Sir Phil Main, once again, the headshot onto Blue Light. Down the drain, and here we go. It's going to be a 3v4, make it a 3v3, a 2v3, as Derek, oh, excuse me. Derek able to pick up Raze off the back of it, and Sir Phil Main, I mean, this must be the gun of choice, because the pressure is always on when he's got this thing out. It's absolutely phenomenal so far, and the lead is growing for Becker. They are just taking this and running with it. Yeah, I, I I will never make fun of the Guardian again after seeing this performance. <laughs> That's how I feel about it. And Becker, we saw this last time. They came out of the half looking hot. They're looking really on fire right now. They have just won three rounds in a row since the swap. And the difference here is that Tiffin doesn't have nearly as big of a lead. So now they're down a lot. And this is the right. biggest lead differential they've had. They lost the last game. I think it was 10-13. So... If they lose this next round, that's going to be four rounds in favor of Becker and Tiffin. They're going to be staring at the end of the series. Once It was once really winnable. Now their economy isn't great. I think the Marshall's most expensive gun they have on their side. We didn't see them get value out of it last time on Bind. So they're really in a pickle. I was going to say they're in a Bind. I didn't want to be, you know, right <laughs> that seems you there and Mr. Reliable not going to be too reliable there as they fall. Yeah, not going to be too reliable indeed. Luka Light says goodnight. They're going to put him in an immediate 5v4. And right now, like you said earlier, the Guardian coming out from this Cypher player. I mean, this Cypher player is the Guardian of Becker right now. The eliminations are nothing but flawless up to this point. It's going to be an immediate spike plant as well, a 3v5 in favor of our attackers. And Becker, once again, they have found the steamroller and they are getting ready to steamroll over Tiffin on this attack. Things have just been absolutely amazing. The pressure has to come on from this high ground here. We see somebody down in hell underneath kind of waiting to put the pressure on. The slow and steady approach never really works out well. Well, honestly, I think the slow peak around the corner definitely not looking out too well. Pressure coming out, very hyper aggressive. Sir Phil Main, once again, being that guardian for this team, arrow gonna be eliminated. I'm not, not using the guardian, but I'm still making the joke. Sir Phil Main taking out blue light as well. And now it's gonna be a 1v5. This round looking almost flawless. There it is, Sir Phil Main with the triple kill, a flawless attack coming out from Becker. And once again, that lead just growing. Yep, this is the biggest lead they've had so far, but all I needed was a three map differential, three round differential last time to win it. So we'll see if they can do that again with an even bigger differential. Two more rounds to secure the series, and it, it just looks like Tiffin, they don't have an, an answer. And one thing I noticed there is that they all took the exact same approach. They all went yep. through a heaven, and it, uh, Becker it just assumed, you know, if one member is there, all of them are probably there. They all turned their attention there. They still had all angles covered on the point, so I would have loved to see them rotate someone through mid, go through Shree, maybe through... 
A long instead, but they all just try to take the same exact approach and none of them are able to find any success. Yeah, and honestly, you've got to assume, I mean, maybe they're just mentally boomed. Like, honestly, it could just be a kind of a mental thing. You get reverse swept on map one, I mean, technically map two, but map one that you play, and then they come back just as strong in map two. I mean, you, you've got to get nervous. I'd be terrified. Skyfill main finally able to pick up an elimination there. Three v four in favor of our defenders. That's going to be another one from Mr. Reliable, being reliable once again, not missing a headshot there, able to take out both Sir Phil main and Luca Light. Now, we have seen clutches before. We have seen aces before, but we need to see something come out here that would just be unheard of. This Sova is going to have to pick up four eliminations, grab the spike, and plant it. I mean, it doesn't have to plant the spike in theory, but, you know, you want to get that done. And now the spike is out in the open, so the clutch has to come first. I mean, in all honesty, this round is pr pretty much over for our attackers. Yeah, absolutely. And again, the question is, do you save? Try to keep your eco, or do you try to damage the other team's eco? And again, you, you've won a lot of rounds in a row. You've won four in a row, so you should have a really good economy going to this either right. way. But you've got full armor, you got two shock darts, you got a vandal, and has mostly full up. And now you're stuck in a nano swarm. So now oh, you got yep. your choice but to die, and it's reliable. It does get three kills. And if 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 Tibbing can keep playing like this, maybe there's a shot of them getting redemption. Maybe there's a shot of them doing their own reverse sweep here. But I just don't know. I don't know if they can play as consistently as we've seen from Becker. I mean, their attack looks really great on Bind, but their defense was their weak point last time. They were able to win a few rounds here or there, and that's one that they were able to gain. But I think that was maybe more Becker playing too aggressively that time around and Tiffin just having a good defensive setup. Yeah, absolutely. And by no means an insult to raise on Killjoy here. But, you know, you expect Killjoy to be played a little bit more consistently, a little bit better on defense. When I think we saw Raze, who was playing Killjoy, I think we saw them perform a lot better when they were on their offense. Offense. I think that was definitely something we've seen, which, you know, unusual, um, unexpected for sure. So definitely something to keep an eye out is maybe this Killjoy isn't working as well as they want it to. Maybe this is an experiment for them moving forward, but they've got that lockdown they can use at any point here to kind of just secure even one more round. I mean, eight to ten, that's, that is that is a survivable differential. That is what you can come back from. Yeah, I, I still am a big fan of Killjoy. I think she's most ready to say right now if you're going to pick a Sentinel, but oh. I agree with you. I don't know if yeah. it seems like they haven't really done a great job with her. Like even like when they're just playing defense after they play with spike and attack, it seems like they struggled a little bit, but they're at an advantage right now, at least at the time being Tiffin has a 3v2. A lot of members going down and there's gonna be a very aggressive lockdown, followed by oh. the two ultimates off of each other, and you saw the orbital strike actually used to break the lockdown, so that was a great heads up play. Yeah, that was, that was definitely an unusual play, but a good one nonetheless. I mean, just a flawless job. Raze able to find Firebird once again. You know, as I say it, is that a caster curse? Did I hurt their feeling? I don't know. Raze and Killjoy just comes back and rips that round apart. I mean, I think that was three or four eliminations from that player alone. So I say, oh, the defense isn't working. And then uh, they say, oh, okay, watch this. And the defense works. A phenomenal job. I mean, now they're only down by two. And like you said, if we can see a consistent play coming out from Tiffin that we really haven't seen until now, there's plenty of time for this to be flipped on its head. So why uh, Raze is so good there as Killjoy, because they used their utility early on, and the turret especially was really valuable to find out where enemies were. Uh, Tiffin, they peaked as a team. They were able to find um, two there. They, they knew that there was at least one on site. They didn't know where the other one is, but they commit their own back to find them out. But the other angle that was being held that time in heaven, they uh, peaked it together, so even if they lose one, unless there's an amazing trade paint, where they know they'll get the kill. And it's okay if you trade like that. If you're still 2v1, as long as you have the one person advantage, you know, that's just a great way to keep yourself ahead in that round, and there they're able to do it. Now let's see if they can win more than two rounds in a row on this defense. Absolutely, and it's looking it's looking good, but as I say, it's going to be look a little bit worse. A 4v4, both the, Rain, the Reyna and the Phoenix taken out of the fight there. Definitely an unfortunate look for really, realistically, both of these teams. You see the pressure being put on. Now it's going to be that 4v4. Both of them lose relatively aggressive players, but as long as Epic Evan is alive, apparently going to be able to take Derek out of the fight. And Derek, I can't stress this enough, Derek doing a good job, but not nearly as well as we saw on that raise earlier today. That was just an absolute bloodbath. The bullets from Sir Phil Main just barely missing Epic Evan, but Firebird Jr. able to pick up off the Backer. They're going to go for the spike. They are going to check that corner for the first time we've seen all game. I'm very proud of them for that. The spike plant coming through using the boxes for cover, trying to stay alive here in the chaos. Spike is going to be planted a 3v3 and a critical health Soba. It's going to be the nano swarm coming out just to try to help people stay alive. And the desperate, I mean, the desperation is going to come through as nope. It's eliminated once again. Mr. Reliable able to find that through the wall shot. One thing you can do right now is you're Mr. Reliable is you can use your teleport just to get into Bone House or on a point try to figure out where people are. But now you might not need to as Ray's able to find one. Left alive, and now there's oh. no one left alive. That is gonna be Tiffin. 
really stepping things up on this retake. I think it's been one of the weaker things all game, but I, I feel like we say things and then they just end and up then they happening. Do it. Yeah, then it's, they end up doing the thing. The thing, it's the thing's happening. Finally. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like a reverse caster curse. We're, we're, we're almost giving them the exact ideology and energy that they need to, that they need to come out on top of this. I mean, we've just seen all of a sudden a brand new team from Tippin. The same thing happens first time around coming from Becker and now Tippin looking for a reverse, reverse sweep. I mean, they're really trying to turn this around in their favor. And now as they open up, they can put this in a tie once again. The last time we saw, I think was six to six. And then we saw Becker take the lead once again. And now they're starting to crumble a little bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, the one thing that is going for Beck right now is they have four ultimates, so they can kind of spread out their economy. They can use probably Empress is the first ultimate I would say they should use. That or Blaze going to try to get in here. Now there's going to be a trade that's going to be oh. in their favor, so 3v4, so they may not even have to use ultimates here. Though they did get Derek very weak, so if you can find that jet out, that gives Tiffin an even edge. And one thing that's really interesting is you see that even though they approached A, look at where the spike is right now. It's in Derek's hands, and they're going to be in that... Point is not completely open because there is still a Sova there, so... Oh, look where the Sova's hiding. Let's see if Derek checks their corners this time around. Oh, it's all gonna be... It's gonna be about checking that corner. Somebody's gonna have to make, like, a compilation of us just saying, check your corners at the end of this, because time and time again, we have seen teams fall apart simply because they did not check a corner. That time, Derek didn't find the elimination, but walks face first into Mr. Reliable. It's gonna be a 3v1, and I mean, this omen... This is gonna be a bad omen for the team as a whole. They had that momentum, and then they end up losing it right away. Winning a 3v1, definitely possible. We've seen it a hundred times, but this is definitely gonna struggle. As an omen, you've got a great kit to push in to maybe one other person, maybe two other people, but if all three of these players are in the same spot, turning that corner, they see the omen, the bullets just not coming through as they want them to. The spike being planted, the omen pushing into a 2v1, and that's not exactly what he should be looking for. We see the cypher able to plant on A, I believe, so now this omen's got to book it all the way across map just to try to even get to the spike, let alone take out three opponents to really defuse it. And you saw what Derek there, they were really weak, nope. so they ended up just throwing themselves into Boathouse. And I was really worried, just like, oh no, you just had the spike. But you, they actually gave up the spike to Sir really early on, or not early on, but you know, a little bit before that. So it's a good trade. You're already pretty low, For sure. so you're not going to be worth much in a firefight. So you get information, you know there's one all the way on B, so they just run all the way to A, where they know that there's no one because there's only one person alive. They know the teleport was used already, so stuff like that. You're sacrificing your PDA a little bit, but you get the info, you get the round win, and after giving up two in a row, you're now only two away yourself. Economies are even, so this is still definitely able to be brought back by Tiffin. They're going to have to, you know, do what they've done before and play for the retake instead of playing for the early round. I feel like when they lose people early on, that's when they struggle the most. Yeah, absolutely. Now you're going to lose that uh, that drone right away. But now that's not really a player. It's losing the drone, unfortunately. But you got a little bit of recon. You know the omen. You kind of kind of give himself away with that smoke cloud anyway. But you know he's in the area and you know that he's definitely looking out to find eliminations. Pushing into the 2v2 is going to be difficult moving forward. Or the 2v1, excuse me, as the omen. Difficult. But now we see we're going to switch to Firebird, who has the spike. There's something that I've noticed coming out from Becker is they're doing a lot of passing the spike back and forth. We didn't see that same thing from Tiffin. We see a lot from Becker. The aggression of, oh, I've taken a little bit of damage. I might risk dying here. I'm going to push in. You take the spike. And I think that's huge because now if that person that pushes in does die, they don't have to risk losing that spike in the process. They can now maybe go to the other side of the map, force a rotation from our defenders instead of putting that spike kind of right in the face of danger. Yeah, absolutely. You got to keep your spike with someone who's going to be a bit more passive in a team fight or somebody who's going to be rotating around the other way. You don't want to be giving it to someone who's going to be going straight into the point like Derek on a jet who's just going to be dashing it. Because then the spike, it's pretty much in the defender's hands. You have to play for that instead of just being able to play your own game. So that's just great game awareness and game knowledge. And just like knowing oh. there's going to be someone in that corner. But it's going to be arrows into flying too. They can self heal. So again, Tiffin, they've got the advantage. They win the early trade, and that's generally when they've been able to win on defense. Yep, and there goes Derek, able to, and Derek and Lucalite able to take out Blue Light in a race, so as soon as we see a lead in Tiffin's favor, it's going to disappear right away. Arrow trying to bring it right back, it's going to be 2v2, there's the 13 ace? seconds left on the clock, the spike is going to be here, but is the ace going to come through instead? 10 seconds left to plant the spike, time is ticking, and Lucalite able to take Arrow out of the fight, now the omen, the last one left alive, sneaking into the back line, able to find make it one elimination, is it going to be able to be two? We're going to have to see this blow slate coming out from a full health jet pressure coming out, the bullet's flying, and it's going to be Derek with the headshot onto Mr. Reliable, once again, could not be close. So that one-to-one -one win comes out in favor of Becker once again. They are taking this lead. This could be the match. I mean, this is the match point. This could be the final round. 
It is indeed. If Becker can win this one, it's going to be match, set, point, all done and over with, which is crazy because you and I both were talking about this during the break. We thought this would be a one and done series because of the fact yeah. that Becker had to forfeit that first map. They just brought it back. They have brought this energy. They have brought this explosion of gameplay that has worked out in their favor, and they've made less mistakes. I think that's been the biggest thing. They've made more team plays and less mistakes, which has really been a telltale of the series. Now, all they got to do is put it away. Seem to not make too many more errors. The ultimates are a bit even. We'll see right now if Blue Light can do anything after being flashed out of that third ball. Epic Evan able to take out Luke Light. Blue Light able to find Derek as well. Folks, this is the now or never moment. Let us know in the chat. Do you think this is going to be it? Do you think Becker is going to secure a victory here? Or do you think Tiffin's going to be able to take it a couple of more rounds? Right now, it's a 4v3 in Tiffin's favor. And the aggression coming out very well. They're able to take out both the Reyna and the Jet. The pressure is just flying. Things are hyper aggressive now. And now Firebird Jr. We've seen this man frag left, right, and center on his lonesome. And I wouldn't be surprised to see that again. It sounds like the spike, I think, yeah, the spike has been dropped, and it's right around this corner. Now, just trying to find out if anybody's blocking it. Able to put that smoke bomb down. Going to have to fly in and grab it. They know where the spike is, and they're going to just... They're going to empty fire into it, trying to find out if they can find the elimination or not. Not going to be able to find one quite yet. A 3v4, and while this is going to be difficult, this is definitely still winnable. Check your corners, folks. Nope, said nope to that hidden corner one there. Going to be a 2v4 in favor of our defenders. I do not think this is going to be the final round. It really is looking like Tiffin is going to be able to secure at least one more under their belt. Yeah, they just need to stay alive at this point. Every round they win is going to run closer, and at this point, they might be going to overtime if they can win it from There is the over-the-top shot. Again. Blue Light able to get it this time around. That spike going to be diffused, and that is a highlight reel kind of play right there that helps set you up. Gets you a little bit of momentum. I mean, obviously, you get the round win there, but that, that's a hype moment that might get your team right back into this. They need to win two more to force force ot rules and then it's a whole new ball game if we get their set the ultimates are still a little bit in becker's favor they've got to make sure that they don't play a fire for too long there and they lost the spike and we talked about how you need to make sure that whoever's going for it doesn't have the spike there they put themselves in a bad position early on and even though that nano swarm was a little bit too far to actually punish becker out in the end it was enough to create a diversion it was enough to make sure that tiffin Here. could secure that round so 12 10 we could see the same scoreline as last time if Becker put it away. It would be another 13-10 in their favor, but Tiffin, I don't think they're going to go into that quiet night just yet. Yeah, no, I, this this may be their final hour, but the swan song has yet to be sung. The smoke coming out. There's going to be three blue light right away, finds Derek with the headshot down main, and that is going to be huge down mid, excuse me. That's going to be Arrow finding Firebird as well. So Epic Evan kind of dumping into the sofa there, but not going to be able to find an elimination yet. Sir Phil main, I mean, jump. Absolutely, all of a sudden we see another swap coming out. Tiffin, they're gonna put the pressure on and the pressure is gonna come out swinging here. I mean, the pressure is absolutely relentless from this team. Almost able to find an elimination onto the Phoenix, but not quite yet. Arrow gets that vengeance kill. Nope, able to find Arrow. And I mean, can Nope clutch at the back of this? It would have to be a Hail Mary play if I've ever seen one. The pressure coming from left, right, and center. Down to 30 health already, no healing in the kit. And this is gonna be another round one for Tiffin. This is just relentless so far it's really gonna be on 12 to 11 things do not get closer than this folks and you know what they're not doing right now on the side of tiffin they're not chasing and we talked about this on buying how they kept doing that in winnable situations and said they're playing the spike so that is huge and one thing that's going to be very important right now is becker they're going to be broke going into this next round so all they're going to have is this one vandal as well as i think a few ultimates here and there including, including the hunter's Fury, which you see is online already the play that really helped win taking that round was that they use the Hunter's Fury there. They use it like you would in Ares. They throw it all the way down Garage, just into that long hallway. They got a few hits. The fall rotations were there. So Tiffin, they really had some great team play, which, again, we talked about team play versus individual play. Tiffin, they've been Ten usually having those great left. individual plays, but there, they're able to work together as a whole squad. They lose two along the way, but their economy is going to be nice and healthy. Except to Lentz, yeah, we have seen some crazy 50 rounds from Becker. But I really think we're going to be going to OT. I really no, think it's going I, to happen. I could not agree more. I was I was waiting to say that very same thing. I really think we're going That's to be going into sorry. overtime. No, it's fine. You're, you're absolutely <laughs> right. The great minds think alike on that. We see a team that was in the lead, but now they have no economy. All we need is one more round win from Tiffin, and that's, that's OT already. So, I mean, it is, it is almost a guarantee. They literally, the economy Firebird has zero. I mean, he literally has nothing to his name right now. So that is definitely not a good look moving forward. They can maybe give us a, you know, a pseudo thrifty round. Not, you know, not necessarily actually thrifty, but... They can give us a very low buy round and really put the pressure on, but this is going to have to be a flawless round if they want to secure a victory. One thing to note is that I do believe economy does reset a bit when they get to OT, so even they don't have a lot of money working on it. Oh! Aggressive and 
Becker says, we don't care that we don't have the best guns. We're just going to go in. We're going to run in. And there you see the Empress Online. They sell Hunter's Fury, the Orbital Strike. They have Blaze Storm as well. All that Tiffin has right now is that Lockdown, and they just Hellfire. used it. So the Orbital Strike, it's been used to break the Lockdown every time it's Again. destroyed. Again. And Becker, Becker might do it. They might end the series right here. This could be it right here, right now. The Nano Storm out as well. And that is the biggest brain play we've seen. That that Hellfire coming through and destroying that Lockdown every single time. It immediately destroys such a useful ultimate. The spike has been planted. If Tiffin doesn't do anything, they lose. But here comes Nope on a Mr. Reliable. Arrow onto Nope. Derek on the blue light. The lead still in favor. Arrow able to find Derek as well. It's going to be a 2v3. The spike is up. The time is ticking. Arrow down. We have to see Ray's plus right now. That's one elimination. And that's not going to be enough. That's going to be another round win for Becker. A phenomenal job with the, with the double game win. They come back from the claws of defeat from the depths of hell itself and the series comes to a close with becker able to secure that two to one score even after sacrificing that first game they're able to come out on top that could not have been a better opening game for season zero necc valorant i mean that was just the the spring split has been cracked wide open already Oh yeah, and this is just the challenges division. This this is like the second tier out of three. So imagine we get up to the first tier a little bit later on. I mean, it's gonna be insane. But this is like you said, one of the best ways to get started out here at the NECC season zero. We had a great way to open up Valor and. There were only, I believe, five rounds that separated these two teams across those two maps. Obviously, that first map that was not placed. So there's no round differential there, but. It's really just those little inconsistent plays, those little mistakes. They added up for Tiffin just a bit too much there. It was all or nothing for Becker. They realized, you know, if we lose this round, we still have another chance. But if we win this round, we don't even go to OT. They did it there. But Tiffin, I got to shout it out to them. I mean, they improved a lot throughout that series. You see Blue Light was leading the lobby. Them and Sir Phil Main were very close, very neck and neck. So they still had a lot of great plays. Just a little bit less individual skill and a little bit more team synergy. Yep. I think will really separate Tiffin going forward, but still it's a loss. But it's a loss you feel good about with how well you executed Absolutely. at the very end. Just couldn't get it done all the way. And so I think it's getting to that time where you and I are going to be handed off to someone else. But before we do that, I do want to note there are four matchups coming up tonight. So don't be going anywhere. And the next one's going to be a doozy. It's going to be Florida Gulf Coast University versus Johnson and Wales University. Yeah, absolutely. And those are supposed to be pretty, that's supposed to be a pretty intense matchup. And it's going to, we're going to be handing it off to Vincent and Orbital. You guys are going to get to meet in just a minute, but Jag and myself will actually be back at 11 p.m. Eastern tonight for the final game of the evening here at NECC. So definitely keep an eye out on that and stick around today, guys. If you thought this was intense, there is so much more Valorant left to be played today. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you guys very soon. But for the time being, this is Septilins and Jag signing off.